All right. Uh, so as uh, was sent out in, in, in the email this morning, if you guys did see it, uh, we, we are going to talk about these 30 proposed rule changes that the USGA released this morning. Um, as obviously it's uh, exciting and something that we want to to see and, and talk about, uh, you know, match play is, is important, but uh, that can wait. Now, we'll probably only talk about this for this this session, then we'll get through the rest and we can talk about uh, you know, this as we get closer. Obviously, this is not going into effect until 2019, so um, trying to trying to learn one set of rules is hard enough, but let's, you know, we don't really need to, to yeah. learn two of them. Thank you. Um, but, but we can still discuss this because I think it's important to, to discuss and to, to go through some of the rationale behind uh, these proposed changes from, from the USGA. So uh, just, just so everyone knows, uh, all this information is on the USGA's website, so usga.org. Um, you'll see a lot of coverage on the Golf Channel as well. Uh, but but this is this is all accessible to anyone who wants it, um, and and you can just go on their website. They they do a great job of having videos for, for every single rule change, which we'll hopefully get through a lot of them. Uh, but the videos, like um, Alin was saying earlier, they, they do help explain exactly what this rule what these proposed rule changes mean, and then it lists the reasons why instead of kind of assuming one way that you can actually see exactly what they're talking about. So we're going to go ahead and uh, play a lot of these videos, and then we'll kind of play the video, read the text, and then discuss if there's any you know, questions or whatever about each one. So, All right, so the first one, uh, ball at rest, ball moved during search. And... <clears throat> The, the videos were loading a little bit slower earlier, so I apologize if that's going to be the case again. Can you imagine how many people are accessing that website right now? Yeah. <laughs> I believe it is the yeah. overburden. <laughs> All right. And then it's our, then our sound isn't working, which is great. Uh, let's see. What did I do last time? Well, each one does have a full written ex explanation down yes. below, too. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Which it's is good. more thorough than the video. So now these are taking effect until 2019. Well, right now they're right. proposed just that they're seeking comment. Oh. Okay. Uh, the run right up the plate. Hey, There's the explanations. Yeah. Those are the decisions. These are the explanations. Right. For each rule. Oh, yeah. For, yeah. For, the for each rule. I started and quit. Here's the rules, rules and here's the rules and decisions. But guess what? Yeah. Not your last decision book. No. So no. This is what I took off the website. Hang on. Hang on. This one here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the next book is going to be as much, much smaller. Did you look at the second email that came out the And they're putting the a lot of the decisions yeah. into the rule book. A nice email that came out from the U.S. Mm -hmm. Just a poor guy. So that'll be your last decision book. Well, and Jeannie, what about 16 GF or whatever it was? Last oh my week? gosh, we won't get to use that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think I've got the sounds figured out here. Under the proposed new rules, there will no longer be a penalty if you accidentally move your ball while searching for it. You must replace the ball on its original spot. If you don't know the original spot, as is the case with this player, you simply estimate it, including how the ball was lying under the grass, and replace the ball. To learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, please visit usga.org slash rules. So here's the here's the reasons and I mean, just go, just looking at um, myself, I Nick. Mean, I think one one question I I have is, you know, are are the players going to be placing it back in the correct spot? Um, if let's say the ball was really really nestled down, you know, are are they going to do that? Or maybe you know they kick it in a place where they don't know where it was, and you know, are they going to give themselves a bad lie? I, mean, I don't know. It's a game of honor. Sure. Would exactly. You? So, but. I personally, I guess I'll share. I mean, I I think this is great. Uh, I I hope that that they'll get to the point where they say any accidental movement is on penalty and put the ball back. But I'm not that they haven't gone quite that far. But I hope eventually they will, um, because if you're in the middle of the fairway and you 
your you get your range finder out and you drop your range finder and hit your ball. I mean, mm -hmm. has has there really been an advantage game about it? So they take care of it on the putting range, we'll get to, and then during search they've got it. But um, you know, we'll see. Mm -hmm. So does that have, does that explanation say anything about why that isn't in, uh, one inch drop rather than placing? Uh, <clears throat> They said, okay, so the ball will, all, will always be replaced. If the exact spot is, is not known, the player would replace the ball in the estimated original spot, including under or against any attached natural objects that the ball has been at rest under or against. So they don't get into this. They still live in their ivory there. tower. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I mean, it, it makes sense in its own way. This is a ball that had a place on the course. So rather than drop, you're doing your best to yeah, but you're not. I, you, you, you don't, don't know where it is. You don't know where it is. You kicked it. So therefore, it should be dropped. Yeah. I, right. But, but you know, aren't they, uh, you know, it used to be that the word replace could be either dropped it is. Or, or replaced. Yes. Now it's like they're using the replace. No, they're changing place. everything. Exactly. They're just going to use replace all places. Place, right? Yeah. You've got to keep in mind they're trying to make it simpler. Right. And faster. And well, how can you replace something you don't know where it was? Read the read the Jesus. Yeah. Well, well, read the free trip well. to the Dairy Queen. We'll start again tomorrow. Read the read, <laughs> read the reasons. All right. I can't read them. I can't. Yeah, it's oh, too far. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah. reasons. I think we know. A fundamental principle of golf is to play the ball as it lies. So the rules should help the player to find his or her ball and play it from the spot where it was at rest. Uh, often, players often need to probe in grass, bushes, leaves, and other conditions to look for a hidden ball, and such reasonable acts create an inherent, an inherent risk of moving the ball. Now, the current rules allow both an opponent in match play and other players in stroke play to help search for the player's ball without risk of penalty if they accidentally move the player's ball. Outside persons, such as spectators, are allowed to help search as well. It is inconsistent to encourage everyone but the player or his or or caddy or partner to look for the ball, and this creates an odd incentive for the player to hold back and let others search. The funny thing about the rationale is that every single one of those reasons exist without the change. Yes. They don't say you must change. Those same facts existed Absolutely. to produce the old rule. Yep. Well, I hate to be a cynic, but <laughs> the guy in the U.S. Open is going to do this right. The average Joe out there mm -hmm. on the public golf course is going to go swinging through that rough mm -hmm. because he wants to move it. He's going to go mm -hmm. under that bush and he's going to go like you that. You betcha. And he, oh, because my when ball. he get when he moves it, so, now he gets to place yeah. it. Yeah, there's my ball. If he moves it, but he still has to well, find it. I mean, it's better than not finding it, right? I mean, if he doesn't find it, he has to go back to the tee. So that's even worse. Right? Well, yeah, but that's not changing this rule. That would be the same no matter what. But now he has total impunity to do whatever he wants in that area well, but the guy because he wants in, to move it. The guy playing in his nine-hole company edge. golf league is going to do what he wants anyway. Yeah. In competition, we've got a standard anyway, and we would expect a higher, you would expect, you may not get, you'd expect a higher <laughs> form of conduct. Okay. Well, I'm just 75%. Jeannie, yeah. do you agree with the last sentence of that rationale? What does it, it say? It is inconsistent to encourage it. You know, everyone but the player or his yeah. caddy oh, yeah. to look for the ball. Yeah. You, you, well, there's nothing under the current rules that says the player can't look for his ball. He just has to yeah. be careful. Except if he moves it. But if it's in the penalty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that's the difference. Yeah. Is that, anyhow, that, that's why it's a proposed. That's why you're going to get a ton of discussion on it, I believe. And you got 29 more to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No penalty for mo ball moving. We don't really need to watch that one because that that's basically just the a local rule that's that's going to be in effect um, instead of it being a local rule, it'll be in the rules. Um, one thing about the rules too, uh, they're they're basically going from 34 to 24. At least that's the proposed numbers, which, which I think, again, is awesome. Um, but and, and, and they have a sample draft of, of what the rules look like on, on their website as well. And they're going to have not, not only a, a draft for, for us as the rules officials, but they're going to have a draft for players as well to have a more dumbed down language or language that's um, easy, easier to translate into other languages. 
Um, that's, that's more simple for people to understand. And then with the rules, they're also going to have a committee's um, manual, I think is, is, is the term that they called it. Um, and, and then uh, also a uh, <coughs> handbook, yeah. which, which is going to be the, the new decisions book. So they're not going to have a decisions book there. At least they're planning on not calling it a, a decisions book. It's going to be called the handbook. They didn't even make any reference to whether way. or not any of the decisions yeah. that exist today would carry over into the handbook. <laughs> 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 they're not going to change. They're not going to have to go through decision by decision and say, okay, this doesn't apply or whatever. Mm -hmm. like they do for any revision. But already addressed, already addressed. Right. Yeah. We, need, we need additional words. I'm just curious. So this is the USGA. What about the RNAs? Are they? Together. Together. Yeah, together. Yeah, they made a joint uh, yeah, that's a good proposal and they were both. All right, so this one here, um, standard for why the ball is moved. Again, um, we'll swatch it here. Other than when your ball is on the putting green, if you take an action near your ball and cause it to move, you will still get a one stroke penalty under the proposed new rules. However, you will only be found responsible for causing a ball to move if it is known or virtually certain that you did so. This means when it is 95% or more likely that you caused it to move. In the case of this player, it is not virtually certain that his actions caused the ball to move. Therefore, it will be treated as being moved by natural forces and played from the new location. So again, this this one basically it, it, it kind of um, switches things around where you have to have known or virtual certainty that the player caused the ball to move in order for it to um, you know be, be a penalty. Other, other than on the putting green, because on, on the putting green, it, you know, it's uh, it's not going to be a penalty, um, but that but that's still going to help on the putting green as well, determining uh, did 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 the ball move or did the um, you know by by natural resources or or did the player cause it? And so one one of the examples that they referenced um, was God, what was it? Um, you remember what they said? It was it was on the golf channel. They said um, it wasn't it wasn't last year when. when of Brooks Kepka, well, we could use that example, but last year at the Masters, Brooks kept his, his ball is on the green, I think on 15 at Augusta, and the wind gust blew and blew it in the water and after he had marked it or put it back in play. And so under this, uh, he would he would move it back, no penalty, whereas before, play it was play the, play the ball as UI. And in that case, he would have to go and take water hazard. Yeah, the, the example they used was the girl on the LPGA. Yeah. Yes. When she had placed her ball oh, down, yeah. picked up the ball marker, went and threw the ball into the right ball. at the at the, the yeah. pumpkin. Was was at the pumpkin uh, third. Yeah, so Mission Hills. Mission Hills. What they're saying is, once you've marked it and replace it, once your ball's at then, rest, once your ball is at rest. rest. But that's different from this one. That's not the rule we're talking about. This, yeah, this is read the reasons for this change. He was, he was just referring yes, to the green. Then I understand. Yeah. That's why. But this is so getting back to this one. Yeah. So we'll read this one. So under the new rule, the known or virtually certain standard, meaning at least ninety-five percent likely. I always thought it was ninety-nine point nine percent likely. That's the change. That's that change. So that is a change. Okay. That is a change. Perfect. So um, so that that would apply to all questions of fact about why a ball at rest moved. A player. Uh, opponent or outside influence would be found to have caused the ball to move if the player, opponent, or outside influence was known or virtually certain to have caused it to move. Otherwise, it would be assumed that natural forces caused it to move. So in this case, you'd have to ascertain whether or not the seismic event of him taking practice strokes mm -hmm. had any action on that ball move. And so the reasons the weight of evidence test is often difficult to apply in, in all or in ball move situations. 
Many competing factors need to be balanced, such as what the player did near the ball, the lapse of time before the ball moved, the lie of the ball, the slope and other course conditions near the ball, in the presence of wind or weather conditions, and there is no prescribed way of prioritizing or balancing these factors. So again, it's still going to come down to the committee to decide, um, but this Read kind of sentence. Yep, sure. <laughs> Keep reading. But the known or virtual certainty certain standard would be simpler to apply because it would eliminate most close calls where it is hard to know for sure why the ball moved. This rule change also means that only the single standard of known or virtual certain known or virtually certain would be used for all ball move questions rather than the, the situation under the current rules where different standards apply in deciding whether an outside influence move the ball or whether the player or opponent did so. And I think that's that's also a key because you've eliminated all those other ball moves from other issues. You know, so it's it, you got one known or virtually certain, and that's the definition of known or virtually certain. Yeah, sort of the proposed whether they do that or not is going to be certain. Mm -hmm. Sure, and now you don't have yeah. a deflected ball as your ball, right? So if so, I guess just I'm asking the question. So if if, it, if it's 95 percent as opposed to 99 and nine, why why did they move that? Is it is it just because I know like 95 percent mm -hmm. is a is a fairly standard thing for when you're determining probabilities. Um, that's usually two standard deviations from the mean or something along those right. lines. So maybe it's that based on that, or I, I mean I'm not sure. If if nothing else, that would be a good item to capture from this group and make a note and maybe send it to these guys as a question that we've all agreed is rational or makes some sense. You know, if that, that's what they're looking for is comments or suggestions, additional problems or shit that they cause by doing this. And so if we were concerned about that, write that down and submit it as a group no, no, wait, can, can we have shitty rules if Lee isn't here? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you a question? Something I learned the first time. Yeah, week. sure. Go ahead, Doug. Um, basically, that uh, young man that was swinging at the ball, I think he should have uh, had a penalty stroke. The ball's been laying in the middle of fairway, uh, and no one has touched it. He walks up to it, takes a couple practice swings, and the ball moves. I am pretty confident that uh, his actions around the ball were, made it move. So their example that they're even using there seems to be contrary to what they're trying to do. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think a lot of people here agree with you with that. Um, um, the video is misleading. Yeah, yeah it's, sure. It's not a good according to what the video it was pretty hard to get that gopher to pop his head up and not look at it. And that's why that well, example is there. I how they got the ball. Yeah. 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 Good so question. The a string on it. Yeah, it's it's invisible. Yeah. 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 They're trying to make it through the game more friendly. So they really basically just changed the criteria between they moved it from 99 to 90, 99.9 to 95. Yeah. The well, really, point nine is just more yeah, that's what they are doing. The the but it's all ball move issues here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they didn't do anything to make it move. However, you will only be found responsible for causing if it is known or virtually Lots of luck, guys. Lots of luck, guys. There's the point. It's not virtually certain to be constant. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. To learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, please visit usga.org slash rules.
practice on. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think it's it's more of just changing the, the framework and how you look at it. And it's it's kind of like, I guess to use another example, it's like guilty until proven innocent or innocent until proven guilty. I think they're just switching the way that the rules official looks at it. It's, okay. it's kind of the way that I see it. A lot of these have changed in that concept. I think that's true. Yeah. All right, Gene. Pay attention to this. One. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, is, this is for you, Gene. <laughs> Shaking the bush. <laughs> After playing the shot, this player notices another ball and loses it. <laughs> Almost immediately, a player on another hole advises them that the lifted ball could be hers. In such cases, when your ball is moved or lifted by someone else, it will be replaced either by you or that person. <laughs> this is <laughs> done by simply placing the ball on the spot and moving it from. <laughs> that slot is the fact known, as is the case here. It is simply estimated and the ball is replaced. <coughs> to learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, <laughs> I have a name for this one already. <laughs> Dare we ask? Please license to steal. <laughs> 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 license to steal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so under the new rule 14.2 CS, um, the ball would always be placed on a spot rather than being drawn. If the exact original spot is not known, the player would be required to replace the ball on its estimated spot, including on, under, or against any attached natural objects that the ball has been <laughs> at rest, <laughs> on, under, or against. <laughs> Reasons Reasons for the change. The but you know, you talk about that. Hmm? What's the difference between I that when you go to a sandbox, not... you dig around, you find your ball, and then you're supposed to recreate? You're going to it's that no that different game. there than it is that. Then you can't tell me that people are making that ball exactly the same. No, it's no different. That one certainly. Well, this makes sense. This that one, one makes all the sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just move twelve inches from where it was. She now has a shot that she didn't have before. Right. If you think so, go back and look at the picture. I didn't look, think it was in a different spot. Well, it was up in the crotch, right? Up the tree this way, and you moved it down here to the bottom. Do you want me to show the video? Well, finish reading okay. first. Okay. And then, but I, I didn't look at the pictures that way, but go ahead. Okay, so a fundamental principle of golf is to play the ball as a lie. So this should mean that when a ball at rest is moved, it should be returned to and played from its original spot or as close to that original spot as possible. When a player marks the ball spot with a ball marker before lifting the ball, the original spot is known and the ball is replaced in the marked spot. But when a ball is accidentally moved, the player may not know the exact original spot. Currently, if a ball was at rest anywhere off the putting green, the player must drop the ball as near as possible to its estimated spot and play the ball from where it comes to rest, unless it rolls to where it must be redropped. Uh, this means that the ball will often not be played from the estimated spot as the ball as the drop ball is allowed to roll as much as two club lengths away from that spot. It also means that the ball may end up being played from a better or worse lie than the original lie, such as when the original spot was in the rough and the drop ball comes to rest in the fairway, or vice versa. Or when the ball has been at rest in deep grass and the drop ball comes to rest on top of the grass. Requiring the player to replace the ball in the estimated spot, including being required to replace the ball on, under, or against any, any fixed or growing things that has been at, at rest on, under, or against, would help make sure the ball is played from as close as possible to the original spot and from the same or almost the same line. Replacing the ball in its estimated spot also applies when the player does not know the exact original spot of a ball that was lifted or moved on the putting green. And so the same procedure would apply throughout the course. So we want to look at the pictures sure. before and after. <laughs> after playing the shot, the ball up there again. See what it looks like? Yeah. 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 So it's right under the. Yeah, but which one was it? Yeah, it's not a picture of it. No, that's the one he found. The little flower. Yeah. Well, you don't need to. You're going to see it moves about eight inches. Yeah, he's. Uh... Mm -hmm. 
almost immediately. A player on another hole advises them that the lifted ball could be hers. In such cases, when your ball is moved or lifted by someone else, it will be replaced either by you or that person. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a damn oh. foot. Now you've got yeah. a shot that you didn't have. Mm -hmm. Now she's got a shot. Yeah. But, so it's okay, he didn't ball. pay attention to where he picked it up from because he was going to put it in his pocket. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this gal comes back, and now it's her ball. So, so she benefits from his ignorance. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly that, That's part of the that's what that's rationale. You, you're going to put it back as close as possible to the point where, because you don't have a good job. You don't have an exact location identified. Well, that's true, but he knows it. He stuck his hand out there. But you're asking why you did that. I understand yeah, because we saw it with the with the advantage of technology to say, okay, you moved it four inches or five inches, and it's different. Okay, and you could get into if you had the cameras there, you would have corrected it after the round when you reviewed the pictures. But this is why they're saying here. Who's the guy? But that that's a good question. I would suggest you. This is an example of the presentation here. So, is this what they wanted to show? It's as close as, but it's not in the exact location. So you're saying that there are the, the, some of these videos, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I don't know. But you think maybe some of these vi these videos are like this way to get people to talk about it. I no. believe that is a true statement. No, so. no, I don't. I think I they would, were done by some. I would be surprised if, that, if, if that's the case. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, personally, it doesn't personally, sound I don't like think that these two situations are anything. No. <laughs> I think probably gonna punch out. Yeah, I I don't think it makes any difference. I think what's happening here is the USGA is making a kindler and gentler set of rules, and they don't really care if you're back exactly where you were. If you're within a foot or two, that's where you are. She plays more fun to know where the ball was because you picked it up. That's right. That's right. She didn't. It wasn't any advantage that she was trying to get. Those two people could have been, you know, now when they realized that this guy could be 50 or 100 yards ahead of, she hollers at him, and now he's got the ball in his pocket. Right. And you come back, where do you think it was? She says, I think it was right here. He's going to put it back. But you know, they're right to the point that it's more likely you're going to be in a closer line with the original by placing it than dropping it. Absolutely. If you dropped it, that ball is going to hit that tree. Hit the tree, and roll away. Say, kick way out. Yeah. I mean, let's say that, that the ball is, 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 is here <laughs> instead, and then you <coughs> drop it and it rolls up. Absolutely. Up and that's tree. Is that, mm -hmm. is that fair to the player? I mean, I would say, I mean, yeah, I guess it's fair because that's the rule, but. I, mean, I think this is a lot fairer than at the ball dropping through and getting yeah. you know, cracked over. Well, I, th I think the USGA is trying to make the rules gentler and fairer. And yeah. I agree. Just, they're, I agree. they're just they easing up on them. Tournament. Yes. On and if you get the ball back somewhere where it was, that's okay with them now. Close is better than Close is better than yeah. Yeah. It is a significant advantage or disadvantage. Yeah. 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 If nothing else, the you'll make a player. note, make a comment yeah, on that one. Exactly. Because they're going to do But they wanted to anyway. have the, you know, we the, mentioned a lot of times. Right? This was a couple of those they mentioned. You know, it's, it's, probably it's without having have just playing the elite no, tournament playing. No, no that's true. No, because that's you have right. people right. out there. So you would do it. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Well, yes. Don't you want to take Charlie Strode at five? But, you know, we're not playing for anything. We're not playing for anything. You know, well, yeah, tournament, you know, different story. Right? You know, and that's where I think we got to you got to kind of put yourself yeah. in the both well, situations. Sure, absolutely. So, like your situation with the ball, you guys can be helping you find that ball. They're not gonna let. I like the grass. Yeah, we But I mean, you know, bring it up. If I'm if if I'm playing with someone and I'm shooting ninety, I don't care if someone you know. Mm -hmm. Or lie a little bit. I mean, what's the matter to me? But, but maybe the guy in the group behind me who's, who's, who's two over par does. I mean, I mean for me, I, I could care less. I, I want to get off the course and go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's the game. Yeah. Been there. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Get up. <laughs> trying to make it fun. Let's get to a bar. That's the max score change. <laughs> you didn't watch. So I don't know. I see an increase four and a half seconds yeah. on every player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the golf industry will benefit a billion dollars a year wow. because they'll get that many more feedback. 
Yeah. And and the players will benefit to some people close to actually too. Yeah. And, and have more time to spend with them. their lives. Do they go have them? No, this is my one more. They'll probably get spend more time with the dog. We don't we, we get into the hazard one. one. That's gonna yeah. All right, so that's gonna cut dog, down there. Dog dog sleep motion actually accidentally <laughs> So this one it doesn't have a video, it looks like it just has a graph. I knew this was coming. Oh, oh, no, I won't. Yeah. Except for rating, yeah. 30 years. Yeah, I can. It's bad enough that you're embarrassed that you got hit. You didn't get out of it. Then you get the penalty on top of everything. You're still in the bunker. We're just trying to reduce some of that. So, if a ball in motion is accidentally deflected by you or your equipment, there will be no penalty and the ball will be played from where it can't, comes to rest. And stroke counts, but you just played right. So, if you hit the ball with a piece of equipment, which is your club, like TC Chen, and it accidentally hits your club again mm -hmm. during the stroke, okay. and it goes up in the air and hits your club again, no, no penalty. So uh, no. Hang, hang on, that, that's not correct. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. There's uh, there's a new rule, ten point one b, that says if a player's club strikes the ball more than once in making a stroke, the player must add one penalty stroke. Okay, so that's so that's going to be the same. Stole. That's yeah, not so part they, of the equation. Yeah, so they still talk. They talk about it. Thomas Cagle talking about that on on uh, a golf channel or They did. They did uh, consider looking at that rule, but as of now, they're not. They're not making any changes. So, so a double hit would still okay. be a penalty, or so, a triple hit, or a quadruple. So, Kyle, the guy that I'm playing with at Oakland Hills hits one out of the bunker. Hits the little bunker, goes straight up, comes down, lands in his visor. <laughs> <laughs> swear to God, it's happened. <laughs> Got a tough lie. <laughs> I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry 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 i am sorry
All right. That was that was a good one, I guess. No, no, no discussion on that one. So <laughs> yeah, go ahead, put that one in effect right away. Yeah. <laughs> taking, taking relief. So th this one is interesting. <laughs> Yeah, you did, but then you Falls through the air. It has to fall through the air, it says here. For example, for the immovable obstruction, you should follow the steps demonstrated by this plan. Determine the nearest point where you no longer have interference. Starting at that point, Measure or estimate a 20 inch relief area that is not nearer the hull. And then, drop your original hull or substitute it. That's right. Yeah. That's so good. Anytime you take relief, your ball, when it dropped, mm -hmm. must land in and be played from the defined relief area. Can't pull out of it. To learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, please visit usga.org slash rules. The one inch rule. The one inch rule. Please read the discussion yeah. on this one. Sure. <laughs> Before we have any comments, <laughs> as, as Lynn asked, we're going to read for everything. So. Right. Well, players would continue to drop a ball when taking a relief, but the dropping procedure would be changed in several ways as detailed in Rule 14.3. The focus of the dropping procedure would be on a specific relief area set by the rule under which relief is being taken and would either be 20 inches or 80 inches from a reference point or reference line and may have certain other limitations. Okay, so um, let's see. So reasons for change. A new procedure avoids giving players more relief than necessary. A drop ball is normally allowed to roll up to two club lengths from where it hits the ground so that, for example, it can end up being played up to three club lengths from the nearest point of relief from the, from the cart path for ground repair or up to four club lengths from where the original ball went into a lateral water hazard or where it was unplayable. Requiring the drop ball to come to rest in and be played from the same relief area where it was dropped would make it much more likely that the, the ball will be played from close to where it originally came to rest. The new procedure would make it simpler for players to know where and how to drop a ball. For example, many times today, a player is required to drop a ball as near as possible to a certain spot, such as where the previous stroke was made or where a ball was embedded. And questions can arise whether it was dropped near enough to that spot. The new procedure when dropping with reference to a spot would be to drop a ball anywhere in the relief area measured 20 inches from, but not near the hole than that spot. So everybody's going to have a piece of tape on one club that yeah. under mm -hmm. twenty. You, you saw <laughs> you, you saw that yeah. that was um, that picture. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah here we'll go back to the two pieces of tape. One at twenty and one at forty. No, no. What are you going to do for eighty? And you're going to measure twice. <laughs> forty. <laughs> and you roll a club over. So you're going to measure <laughs> twice. You <laughs> play with his carpenter. Mm -hmm. But there still is a nearest point of relief. Where you no longer have interference. Start. So you can see it, it's right, right under right 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 left thumb is, right. that, is that line. That would, that's the intent. And that, and that will be something that I'm sure it will have. Right. You know, maybe, maybe the USA will start selling tape. I don't know. <laughs> um, that's the recommended well, procedure. Sure. It would be a club manufacturing requirement. Right. Well, I was thinking on every five, on every every five, five minutes, if it gets sawed down or, or right. you know, based on how it's put mm -hmm. in the club, mm -hmm. that might be an issue. So I think, I think they're going to have to use tape. So we'll now check or something. It's, it's a requirement. We'll start a new starter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you've got a 20 will be on yeah. your clubs. The this is the same yeah. issue as, you know, Tape for the you know, two clubs, box. one club. Mm -hmm. right. you know, you get one club from tape. <laughs> markers. We get some tape. We get some pencil. We get tape, but it simplifies the process. Twenty inches for the tape. I think the best thing about this change is um, like, the best thing is that it really, if you open up your book and look at Rule Twenty, it basically. It basically takes out 20-2C, 
which yeah, which is great because I mean, look at all look at all those options. That's seven, and, and in that there's probably another. <coughs> yeah, but go back to the green. Still red the rest of the fight, Yeah, go go back to those. When you look at those examples, the next one shows you know the larger area. You know. So it, you don't end up talking about that. Right. Right. I guess it does take a moment. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's basically just saying, I think that's the one nice thing about this dropping thing is that it does, it does eliminate, you know, it has to come to rest in that, in that area. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't seen them all, but. Keep going to look at the next okay. pictures. Yeah, they're, they're, they're worth a thousand words. I'm sorry. They, in my opinion. <laughs> so which, which one? This the one? next one. Just keep that going down the list. The act of dropping your ball under the rules preserves the randomness as to where your ball will end up being played from. The proposed new rules retain this aspect of the game, but allow you to drop the ball in a wide variety of manners, including from shoulder height, as currently allowed, from hip height, or from any other height, including from much closer to the ground, or in any manner. Including by tossing. Yeah, there we go. We see that a lot. Must fall through the air for more time to rest. To learn more about the proposed change, please go to the Oh, yeah. Or you're still going to still going to have to know when to drop and when to place. Mm. That's not going away. All right. So uh, how a, how a ball may be dropped is simplified with no limitations on how the ball must be held or how high it must be dropped from. The only requirement would be that the ball uh, be that the ball be let go from any height above the ground or any growing thing or other natural or artificial object so that it falls through the air rather than being set down or placed on. The on these things. Um, so <coughs> the, the new procedure moves away from the current mechanical approach on how to drop a ball with its several procedural requirements. The focus would appropriately be on where the ball is dropped and played from, not the mechanics of how it gets there. Um, at the same time, requiring the player to drop a ball as opposed to the alternative of placing it would retain a desired randomness about where the ball will end up. This is especially the case when a ball is dropped in a more dif in more difficult conditions such as thick rock or longer grass. The player has no guarantee that the ball will come to rest on a desired spot or in a good line. Relaxing the restrictions on how to drop a ball would help the pace of play by making it easier for a player to take a leap with only a single drop. Uh, when a ball is dropped from shoulder height, it often rolls a considerable distance so that the need for a redrop is common. In contrast, when a ball is dropped from just above the ground, it will usually come to rest very close to where it hits the ground and should stay in the relief area. Just one inch out of hills. Mm -hmm. Sure. The, the next one's a similar example, I think. <coughs> so, all right, let's keep going. <coughs> Whether you are taking free money or cannot be relieved, in addition to dropping the ball within the defined relief area, it was also safe at the edge. What? She's on a roll. Why would she stop? Here's a good example. Don't forget. Yeah. 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 If you have dropped it only once in one spot without right. success, mm -hmm. Try dropping it on another spot within the area to get your ball to stay in it. You may have to make a text from several locations in the relief area and drop from as low a height as is permitted under the dropping procedure. To learn more about the proposed changes in the future, read the rest of it. <laughs> read the rest of it? <laughs> you will in just a second. Oh, It'll answer your question. All right, so question that Gene asked was what if you can't get the stop? So we'll read and find out. 
All right, so the ball would, would need only to be dropped in and come to rest in the relief area. And there would be no redrop requirement if the ball drop accidentally hits a person or object before coming to rest in the relief area. If the drop ball comes to rest outside the relief area, it would be dropped again. There would be no set number of times for redropping, as the player would need to make all reasonable efforts to drop it in a way and place so, place so it stays in the relief area. In the unusual case where the ball will not come to rest in the relief area, no matter how or where drop, such as a relief area on a steep slope of short grass, the player would then place the ball anywhere in the relief area. If the place ball will not come to rest on that spot after two attempts, the, the player would then place the ball in the nearest spot where it will come to rest. Uh, reasons for change. So the new procedure moves away from the current mechanical approach on how to drop a ball with its several procedural requirements, the focus would appropriately be on where the ball is dropped and played from, not the mechanics of how it gets there. Relaxing the restrictions on how to drop a ball would help pace of play, make it easier for a player to take relief with only a single drop. When a ball drop is dropped from shoulder height, it often goes considerable distance so that the need for a redrop is common. In contrast, when a ball is dropped from just above the ground, it will usually come to rest very close to where it hits the ground and should stay in the relief area. The new procedure would make it simpler for players to know where and how to drop a ball. For example, many times today a player is required to drop the ball as near as possible to a certain spot, such as where the previous stroke was made or where a ball was embedded. And questions can arise about whether it was dropped near enough to that spot, aka Tiger mm -hmm. uh, at, at the Masters. The new procedure when dropping with reference to a spot would be to drop a ball anywhere in, in a relief area measured 20 inches from, but not near the hole man, that spot. It will be simpler for players to know when to redrop the ball. A player currently needs to know the nine redropping scenarios in Rule 20-2C. These are difficult to understand and apply, and it's, this is a widely misunderstood rule. Under the new rule, the player would only need to know the ball must be dropped if it comes to rest outside the relief area. This was yeah, my thing, though, don't they? <laughs> See, you don't need to remember the name now. Oh, damn. So, I guess it's not, it's not just one area. It's, it, there's, there's steps A and B, I guess, after it that doesn't come to, to rest in the relief area. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Um, so, right. Yeah, so, two times we're dropping the place and one more. Dropping, but yeah. if you right. can't get it to then you place and then place it as near as possible to the space. Where you place it, try and place it twice within the area. That's right. In the wrap area. Then you can go outside the wrap area if you need to. You would think so. And I'm assuming this rolling out of the area is going to apply to all drops. Never mentions that it told, because right now it's all can roll out of the ball. You're on a slope where you can't place the ball. You may have to go back, but you have a lake. I don't know. The lake's there. You're going to go to the lake. I think it's a good ball drop. You know, if you draw a ball drop, the drop mark, a drop area. A drop zone. I'm assuming it's going to apply to drop zones. It's going to have to stay in the drop zone. Yeah. But you're still going to drop it. Oh, you know, yeah. You're going to drive it three inches, two inches I'm, from, I'm just, it's going to stay. There. So it's. You're going to what? I'm just going to throw it. You're going to throw it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's more likely that it's going to stay in the drop zone <laughs> if you did it in that case, rather than you got a drop zone that's got a slope. Some contour yeah. to it. <laughs> you know, and you want to play it on the left side because you got to miss the tree, you know, that kind of stuff. So. The other thing that they mentioned on, on, on Golf Channel, I think the, the um, RNA executive director, he mentioned oh. that. A lot of times when we're dropping the ball in the bunker, you're basically getting a double penalty. Well, because, it mm -hmm. yeah, because it, it, it bunkers. Yeah, because it So, now that, this this dropping approach makes it not as penal to, to drop in a bunker, which. So you drop it from there. Sure, exactly. 
but then there's still that element of having to drop and if it's in the rock, you're not going to be able to put your hand down on the rock and drop it. You're going to have to keep your hand above the rock and drop it. There's still an element of you know where the ball may may end up in that situation. But generally, only going to go that far as opposed to sure that far above the heavy rough and the heavy rough is going to eat it or move it. <laughs> to make sure every golfer has the same available area for relief under the physical rules, we will now measure using a fixed distance <coughs> and not clock lengths, which can vary. When taking relief, for example, from an immovable obstruction, the fixed measure will be 20 inches. When taking lateral relief, either from a penalty area or when your ball is unplayable, the fixed measure will be 80 inches. The key is for your ball to be played from within the fixed relief area. To learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, please visit usga.org slash rules. I think it's interesting that they defaulted to inches instead of uh, mm -hmm. centimeters since the majority of the world uses the metric system. Mm -hmm. but that's just, just me. Well, they've got yeah. centimeters. They're yeah. all, the, the, they got them both. Metric dimension is shown on all it, of these. Yeah, items. right. Yeah. Not, not through some of these write-ups, but they're in the rules. It's like, sure. I mean, they thought, sure. Right, like right there, 20 inches, 50.8 centimeters. Right. Yeah. Where did they get the two reference points yeah. for those 80 inches? They were both along the red line. Oh, so I, no. on, so on the player's club, she had a 40 inch mark. Yeah, yeah, no, I got that. But it's like the water the hazard was on the right. right. Yeah. So you had a red line, let's say running from top to bottom. They had one point there and one point there from which they took the 80 inches. He was, she swung the arc 80 inches back into the red line. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Right? She yeah. Go well, over, except, except go Tom, it's a triangle and not an arc. Yeah, well, that's because it was on the red line. That's why it became a triangle and not a full arc. You're, you're used to seeing a, a full half circle, right? Yeah. She couldn't do that because of the hazard line or because of the penalty area line. Excuse me. Yeah. So she could only go that far back. Go back to the back. Well, but, yeah. Yeah. It should still be an arc, not a triangle. Right. I think it, it was just the way it was. Yeah, it wasn't thrown out with the camera. You will now measure using a fixed distance and not clock lengths. When taking relief, for example, from an immovable obstruction, the fixed measure will be 20 inches. When taking lateral relief, either from a penalty area or a swing in the arc. Yeah, it comes back to the red line. On the ground. Yeah. Oh, right. No, 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 I got it. Yeah. It's just, it's an optical illusion yeah. because of the way it works. No, no, it, it's like yeah. a slice of pie, that's right. 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 And, and you're going to get into the discussion about, you know, green area, or red areas and white areas, and that's going to be red and yellow. Red and yellow. Yeah, that's, that's red and yellow. The relief area now is a slice of pie. They're going <laughs> to. <laughs> That's going to be very interesting. There's no water hazards. They just called, what are they called? Penalty areas? Penalty areas. Penalty areas. Penalty areas. <laughs> <laughs> what are they uh, actually improving here by using 80 inches and 20 inches instead of a, just a club length? Everybody's got a club in their bag, but nobody's got, unless they start marking up their clubs for 20 inches and 40 inches, they're not going to have anything. Yeah, it's kind of a yeah. yeah, I understand they're trying to simplify, but this doesn't make it easier. That, that's what it says under that first one there, first line there, the relief of dropping six sides. It's either 20 inches, 50 centimeters, or 80. I don't know how they determine that 20 inches would replace the one club, and, unless the, the intent is. To get you as near to the spot as possible. No, no, that's right. was as the original spot. The, the first no. condition, one club length, or you know, that yeah. is now much smaller before. Right. Because you're allowed to get it closer, you can actually almost place it there. You're going to exactly. drop it. 
So the likelihood that it's going to be in that area is significantly increased, even though it's a smaller area. Now this one is <coughs> bigger. It's greater than two, two club lengths. It's 80. So it's a larger area, yet it's no, defined. I, I, most drivers are 45 less, inches. Yeah, yeah, I think mean it's less. That's 90. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I mean, a, a standard driver is 45. Yeah, so, okay, it's close. It's 80. I think, but I, I think if, you, if you measure from the nozzle to the butt of the yeah, shaft, yeah. it's going to be close to 40. Right. Sure, yeah. But I, mean, I wouldn't say it's too I mean, just yeah. two clubs. Just looking at, at these numbers too, I mean, they're they're very round in the sense 20, 50 centimeters, which is a half mm -hmm. meter, 80 inches, two meters. I mean, I, I think that there was some consideration to try to make Absolutely. it simple and, and then not exactly right. on that way. Yep. So, okay, so mm -hmm. let's see, uh, a re, uh, the first part we already know, 20 inches, a, a redrop would only be required when a ball comes to rest outside the relief area, and therefore, how many club lengths of drop ball rolls would no longer matter when determining if a redrop is required? The team area of any hole would have a fixed depth of 80 inches. Mm. Oh, mm. no, no longer. So that's so that's, so that's no. shorter. That's yeah. one club yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Team got smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Team ground, 80 inches deep. 80 inches deep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, that means we can just push it farther back on the team <clears> now. <throat> and now Ken yeah. is, is the secretary is going to all the notes and give them us. Mm -hmm. Alright, the smaller relief area and not permitting any ball to roll outside that relief area would usually mean that the player will play from closer to the ball's original position than the nearest point of relief and where the player may play from today. Using a fixed distance for measuring would eliminate a number of issues such as the inconsistency, and potential unfairness of having the size of a, of a relief area different for each player based on the length of his or her clubs, eliminating, including eliminating the advantage for players who currently can use a long putter for measuring. Um, the USA they just don't like that long putter. Uh, the confusion about when a player may use two different clubs and taking relief under current rules, a player may use one club to find the nearest point of relief and another club to measure, uh, but must only or must use only a single club for measuring the area for dropping in the distance a drop ball has rolled. The player would no longer need, sorry, would no longer be able to make strategic choices about the size of the relief areas by choosing a shorter club or a longer club for measurement. Mm -hmm. Oh, no wait, it. that's absurd. <laughs> for a reason that they're not letting you virtually place the ball. Mm -hmm. So you've got the cruddy area that we've all been in where you got a weed or you got mm -hmm. hard dirt or and that's mm -hmm. all what they want. I mean, once they let you say, I get to pick which of those areas mm -hmm. I like, and now they're going to say, that's a reason for changing the rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome Using, to the USGA. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Using a fixed measure would be a simple process. With 20 inch and 40 inch markings on the shaft, the club's likely to be the primary tool used by players for measuring. I mean, I would say that's that's one you measure one club that you concern have, you know, I have, I and mean, I, I, maybe it's not a huge concern, but I mean, you're basically requiring everyone if they're going to play in a, a tournament to have their clubs measured, and is that something that the golf association is going to do? No, no. Prior to, or is it? You're going to put a ruler in your yeah. You got an official kit. You got a alignment rod. Probably have a rule. alignment rod. That's all you need to but, do. I mean, let's say that that, that it's a junior event and. There's a 12 year old kid that comes up and his parents just bought a brand new club and his parents have never played mm -hmm. golf before in their life. And they come up to the tee. I mean, I, I, I feel like it's something that starters are going to have to ask the players. Are, are your so you know, clubs you keep, and, and if you not, keep the yardstick there? Sure. And sure. With a little bit of ruling on your Sure. But I, I, I think it's something that the us as an association has to consider to, yeah, to do. Mm -hmm. To be prepared for it. Kind sure. Of, yeah. yeah. The same Rollers thing you get. You know, you're telling the guy to measure one teams. club length or two. Is, you know, you know how do you? 20, all of these issues that they just talked about now sure. are basically yeah. eliminated. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's great. It's simplified. I just think we have got a definitive answer. Yeah. We should be able to screw it up. Well, we will. Take them. <laughs> all right. I have a search before last ball. <laughs> this one we already we talked about. But, yeah, that could be a half hour discussion. Okay, so this one just changes the it's from five minutes to three minutes. And completely redirectional. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the reasons for the change: limiting the search period to three minutes is more consistent with the underlying principle 
that golf is to be played in a prompt and continuous way without long pauses in play. In most cases, if the ball is going to be found, it will be found within the first three minutes. Although this change may increase the number of lost balls, on average, the overall impact should be to speed up play. Knowing that the search time is limited to three minutes should encourage players to play a provisional ball when they believe that there is a chance their ball may not be found. So we should only play half a provisional ball then. <coughs> we don't have to look as long. Well <laughs> they can explain anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There, there's it is rational logic to it. But it is what I mean, rational I think maybe, yeah. maybe the rationale is uh, out of 100 balls that end up being lost. Mm -hmm. What would moving at the three? I mean, how many? I don't know. I, I guess is it is it better to save time and make it go fast as opposed to helping those you know five people out of a hundred that find their balls within three minutes? Of Our the, the, the one comment course. that I heard while driving over here this afternoon was that you know you hit the ball. Now it hits the tree. Where did it go? It might have if it continued through. You know, you got a ball out at two fifty. But if it hit the tree in the flex, it could be right under the tree or in some places. Now, where do you start looking? If you only got three minutes to look, you might have a difficult time getting to both of those potential lost ball areas. Good point. But that's, you know, but right or wrong, it is going to create the logical reason to hit a provisional more often than not. So that was part of the discussion that I heard. So I, I think that was interesting. There may be some pushback, make it four, or you know, come up with a negotiated something in the middle. But why, why three? You know, and a lot of times, especially, you know, you you have the issue where, you know, somebody might, you know, you might send your caddy over here, and you're going to help, you know, the other player look for his ball, and now you're going to get there. This guy's already been looking for three minutes or four or five, you know, in that area. You didn't start the timer until the player got up there, so you're going to have a little more time. So I'm, I'm guessing you're, caddy, right? that is correct. So you're going to have, you know, you could have your friends, you know, trying to look at it. But anyhow, that's the. I believe you're going to have some discussion like that around this one. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, I think this one is kind of the first one that's not yeah. player yeah. friendly. I, I yeah. would yeah. say. Now, all the all the other ones I feel have been player friendly. This one mm -hmm. I feel is not. Yeah. But you know, then again, it's, mm -hmm. it's case of player friendly, which is a thing. Mm -hmm. I like the next one. When the rules let you lift your ball to take a leap will be allowed to use either your original ball or a different ball that you substitute. This has always been permitted when taking a leap as a penalty, but the proposed new rules will allow you to substitute a ball when taking free relief as well. This player is substituting a ball when taking free relief from a cart path. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. To learn more yeah. about but it also gives you an opportunity to change balls that may have been likely to be scuffed up, or you know, you can get that ball out of play without having to finish the hole with that ball. If you happen to be on the cart path, or you have a reason to take your leave. When taking penalty relief as well as taking free relief and, 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 and any other time the player is required to draw to play a ball, such as when returning to play, when our previous stroke was made after the stroke was canceled. Reasons for the change. The requirement to use the original ball in some relief situations, but not others, is confusing. Harder, harder to remember and leads to unnecessary penalties. Taking a consistent approach that always allows a player to take relief, uh, allows a player taking relief the choice of substitute the ball or use the original ball is much simpler. There's no need for a different procedure based on whether the player is taking relief with penalty or without penalty. This would also draw a clearer and more intuitive line between when substitution is allowed in returning a ball to play and when the original ball must be returned to play. 
Substitution would be allowed only when a player is taking relief under any rule. That is when the player is required or allowed to play the next stroke from somewhere other than where the original ball came to rest. Substitution would not be allowed when a ball was lifted or moved and the rules required it to be replaced on its original spot. In that case, the original ball must still be used unless it cannot be recovered with reasonable effort and in a few seconds. So no putting ball, no water ball. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you skip the embedded ball, which is on this sheet in front of us? Mm. No, no, it's it's coming up. But yeah, I believe it's coming up. Oh, it's okay. Coming up. Yeah, might be the last. I don't think he. I don't think he skipped any. And no, yeah. yeah. He tried, but yeah. So, I mean, I think it's. I mean, I, I guess yeah. what's what's the what's the rationale? I mean, my question would be, what's the rationale for not being able to substitute the ball anytime? I mean, if 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 Ian Poulter throws his ball to his caddy and his caddy drops and it goes in the water, mm -hmm. then why not just yeah. let him substitute another ball? It just it just seems to make it as simple as possible. Just, that would be nice. Yeah, that's yeah, why they did. Find the fan that's going to jump in the water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, you're you're right. Yeah, I'm just saying, why not just make it all, mm -hmm. all, all the way instead of saying, oh, we still have the situation where you yeah, yeah, that, that, ball ball ball. Ball. that ball to play, you're putting or playing the putting ball. Yeah. Right. Do you think anyone would change for a putting ball? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tons. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Done. Oh, it's my putting ball. Mm -hmm. like Brand new. Saving that. So like so today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to get to finish this round with that ball as opposed to, you know, maybe need two or three. <laughs> you should see it a lot when Ping had the two color yeah. on the ball. Yeah, yeah, sure. But but with technology today, I just kind of. I just, yeah, I don't but, see it. You don't see it? No, no, I don't see any. Yeah. Yeah. So then if you feel like your ball is money ball or been damaged, then you still have to mark it all your fellow competitors over there. You're gonna hear about that one. You're gonna hear about that one. Oh here you are. Yeah, that's ball. Oh, okay. There it is. In the general area. Yeah. Yeah, no more through the green. Yeah, so now it's just a general area except in sand. Um General area is a new term for through the green. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so, you, so you may take relief for an embedded ball anywhere in the general area, which is the new through the green. Mm -hmm. So, rule 16.3 would allow relief for an embedded ball anywhere in the general area uh, except when embedded in sand. But a committee may adopt a local rule restricting the relief to, be in, to, uh, to a ball embedded in those parts. Of the general area cut to fairway height or less. So you get, they're just reversing mm -hmm. essentially the way it is now. In taking relief, the player would drop the original ball or a substitute ball within 20 inches from, but not near the hole, then the point right behind the spot where the ball was embedded. Drop within 20 inches? It's it's within that relief zone that, that they touched on zone. before. That's the little zone. So, yeah, it's no longer as close to the spot. Right. So this is this is, this is an appropriate mm -hmm. exception to the principle of playing the ball as it lies because having to play the ball that is stuck in soft or wet ground, whether in fairway or the rough, should not be considered part of the normal challenge of playing the course. Allowing relief throughout the general area is consistent with other relief rules, which should not make distinctions based on the height of the grass in the general area. In many countries, the local rule is sufficiently well established that golfers assume that the rules will always allow relief anywhere in the general area. Reversing the default position would help avoid the confusion that sometimes exists today when clubs or players do not realize that such relief is not allowed unless the local rule has been adopted. Can you repair your um, ball mark? That the ball was embedded yeah, before yeah, you I'm shoot. Not sure. I'm not before sure. you it's hit. my understanding that isn't going to be changed, but that was, I heard that in one of the conversations too. <laughs> but <laughs> but you still have twenty. You're going to get it within the twenty, 20 inches. Well, I know. Yeah. yeah. I know. So you still got twenty inches. That's the relief zone. And now just fix it after you get out of the relief zone. Right. Don't if you it. remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to fix your ball mark. I think that's what you're trying but to do. We kind of do this now with right. appendix, appendix one. Like in our hard card, we, yeah, we do right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. All of them. So I, I think over in, in the UK, it's, it's opposite. They don't, I mean, that's, that's the reason why it, it's not. Here, there's one. <laughs> well, I don't think you have any embedded. 
you know, normally it had been a guy being the orchestra. Now, how did you just change to be any, anybody? Just going, I don't know. It's pretty great. They made it. it just, I mean, I think making the sound. I think it's a good sound. It's a good sound. It's a good sound. So does it say in your room? I mean, it doesn't say we, in your room. Yes. We have to get out the actual rule, but I mean, I, I mean, there's a chance they might get away from that completely. Oh. Just be, if it's embedded. Yeah. They might take out the judgment on their own. Well, if they're going to use the term out. anywhere, that would mean any pitch mark to me. Any window room. Yeah. Yeah. What? Hmm? Yeah. Well, this says yeah, anywhere, and that to me is yes. anywhere. That'll slow up play. Even the specific. Yeah. This is the proposed yeah. to document. Mm -hmm. Is that on the website? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. It's open. It's still your own fish mark. That's still questionable. Was mm. it? Was it the one that was there before, or was it the one made by the ball? Right. Right. It's still open to. Is it? Or is or is it not? Interpretation for the change. It's a matter of fact. It's in a fish mark. Most likely to give it to the guy. Yeah. But then, but then I guess you get to the, to the, the, the situation. Well, if they're going to do that, then why would you give them a Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I mean, what's the difference if, if it's not your pitch mark? Somebody else's. What's the difference mm -hmm. if your ball happens to roll it into someone else's pitch mark? I mean, there's really no difference between that and divot. Mm -hmm. What's the pitch mark? Yeah, I'm assuming the pitch mark's like a divot. I mean. Sure. Yeah. No, so maybe uh, the pitch mark is made by the landing of the ball. <laughs> the divot is made by your club. Right. And they haven't addressed that. They haven't had a lot. But they did, there is a lot. they did talk about, um, yeah. Mike Davis talked about um, the divots, and he, he noted that Jack is a, is a staunch uh, supporter, Jack Nicholas, mm -hmm. of, of uh, getting relief from, from divot, mm -hmm. but they, they don't have any, uh, I mean, they're not, they're not going to change that, yep. is, is what they said in a, in a nice way. But they're going to allow you to tap spike marks now. Yeah. Right. yeah. Fix the green. Yeah. They'll let you comment on it, but they're not going to change it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? Oh, regardless of the comments, comments are yeah. mm -hmm. over what they've already done. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> but, all right. So, when to replace the ball that moves in the putting green? So I think this is the one that the Brooks kind of going. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure. After you mark, lift, and replace your ball with the putting green, if it moves for any reason, including for your own accidental actions, or for some other reason, such as the wind, you will always replace the ball on its original spot. If you don't know the exact spot, estimate it as accurately as you can. And replace the ball there. To learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, please visit usga.org slash What did that That's say? after you mark it though. Where, Where is that? Yeah. It goes before it gets removed when she walks up there the first time before she's more here. Let's let's see. Go ahead. Let's see. Okay, so new rule 13.1c would revise the procedure for when a ball in the putting green is moved by wind, water, or other natural forces so that it must sometimes be replaced and sometimes be placed in this new spot. If a ball has been, if the ball has been lifted and replaced on its original spot before it moved, the ball must always be replaced on its original spot regardless of what caused it to move. The ball must be placed from its new spot only if the ball had not been lifted and replaced before it moved. Mm -hmm. So only if it hadn't been moved. Mm -hmm. So reasons for change. When a ball at rest is moved by natural forces such as the wind, it is normally played as a lies because its movement is considered a continuation of the previous stroke, as no person or object is affected where the ball lies. But when the ball 
when the move ball has already been lifted and replaced, the connection to the previous stroke is no longer obvious. This is especially true on the putting game where a player is allowed to mark, lift, and replace a ball for any reason, and many players do so as a matter of course. When a ball on the, on the green moves after having come to rest, uh, it can result in outcomes that seem unfair, such as when the ball rolls off the green, sometimes ending up in a bunker or in water, or rolls close to the hole or into the hole. Requiring the ball to be replaced if it had already been lifted and replaced would eliminate such outcomes in those situations. Mm -hmm. So this is going to change what we're doing this year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is new. Yeah. yeah. This is proposed. This, this year, is proposed. Yeah, this, this is just proposed. Still <coughs> still, right. You're still no penalty. So it's no penalty, but you still have to determine whether the player caused it or right. not. Right. And, and if the wind caused it, they get to fly it from the new. Right. This, that, this changes. Even yeah. if it's been picked up and marked, and even if your marker is still yep. behind the ball. Yep. And, yep. And it rolls down. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a rational way to show that. When you mark your ball, you need to mark there, your ball's mm -hmm. still there. Mm -hmm. But the wind blows your ball mm -hmm. down the hill. Mm -hmm. You're down the hill. Play it from where, it's, where it ends up. Mm -hmm. Right. No. Today. No. Today. 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 After the rule change. How about no. See, the after the rule change, it doesn't, if you don't, it can be wrong and you just mark yeah. it. Yeah, you're right. It's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. So, There's again, that there. might be a valid question if you're only talking about an unmarked ball. You know, you had it, you cleaned it, well, you put it back. If it's an unmarked ball, you know, that one was an unmarked even, ball. Even if it's been marked, in, in, in this case, even mm -hmm. if it's been marked, if it hadn't been lifted, mm -hmm. you'd play it from the new spot. That's right. right. It's not really simplifying right. anything. Yeah, it's yeah. Lifted, so you yeah that's where people yeah. are going to start getting confused. You this, this, they start yeah. reading the stuff, mm -hmm. right? And these are proposed for two years from now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We're still playing under the current rules. rules, and we have a new rule change yep. as it relates to the green mm -hmm. of accidental <laughs> turning the ball. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Roll this work. Call the road. Oh, Rover. Yeah, yeah, call Rover. Rover. Right. <laughs> Rover. 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 So damage on the putting green would be defined to include all types of damage such as spike marks, shoe damage, and indentations from, the, from a club or flag stick, animal damage, etc. Except aeration holes, natural imperfections, defects of the ground surface, or natural wear of the hole. So because putting greens are especially prepared for playing the ball along the ground, the rules allow the player to do things on the green that are not allowed anywhere else. The player may mark, lift, and clean a ball on the green any time, remove sand and loose soil on the green, repair old hole plugs and ball marks on the green. Given this philosophy of allowing players to try to have a smooth surface to roll on the ball, there is no conceptual reason for prohibiting repair of other types of damage, whether made by players, animals, maintenance staff, etc. This rule change would eliminate the frequent questions among players and referees about whether a particular area of damage on the green is a ball mark, sorry, damage on the green is a ball mark that may be repaired, or the spike mark or other damage that must not be repaired. The concern has been noted that allowing repair of all damage on the green will slow down play if players try to repair too many areas, but we believe this is unlikely to be true for most players and that the rule against unreasonable delay 
as well as a, a committee's pace of play policy can be used to address situations where a player seeks to make excessive mistakes. Um, maybe we should look Interesting. at and the, the One of the other comments that they made about this this morning in the golf chamber, uh, yeah, well, before I get to that one, was, was where basically they, they thought about doing this because they want to have skill be the ultimate determination of if a ball is pulled or not and not whether, you know, Craig is playing in the group in front of me and, and his, his footprint is my ball offline. And so in an effort of having this most skilled players be, be rewarded, this is one reason why they did it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they brought up was um, Justin Thomas. It was Justin Thomas after um, that, that had the world shook him. But um, Justin Thomas talked to, to one guy from Golf Channel and he said that he's concerned that the, the players may just go up and basically create a, a pathway for their ball to go on so that it's, you know, um, so there, there's definitely some concern out there. Especially the aim point guys. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the discussion. That was part of that discussion. Right. The aim point guys that, you know, walk the line or whether you Scrabble stay the below the line right. and all of that stuff. That's, that was part of <laughs> Kyle? Yeah. Would this allow you to repair damage to the hole? In the exception, it says natural wear of the hole. So, I mean, I, I guess, it, it, you know, I, I don't know for sure without looking at the rules, but maybe if it's if it's uh, you know done by by the flag or done by something else, maybe you could fix it. Yeah. So um, we have I don't to read the sure. real yeah. rest of the rules as it's being proposed right now to see if they closed that loop or right. created a you know situation where you know you could the players finishing a hole could repair. A hole after they've completed it, but you know, the game the hole and one or the one that rips the side out of there. Yeah, well, you can always do that repair it after you complete it, but what about before you putt? Yeah, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we'd have to look at the rules to see. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, as of right now, you know, you can't do that. That's a good question. That would be, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question to, to get some more clarification on. What if tapping down the spike marks causes the ball to move in a windy condition? You don't touch the ball. <laughs> you tap down the spike marks on the putting green, 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 and the ball starts rolling. Right, 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 right. Then you replace it in two years. Wait, two years. And then That's green. So I think I think this one will have a lot of talk. I mean, I, I don't I don't I think of all the rules, this one is probably has has a very high probability of not going through it or having some kind of change. Some, there, 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 it's a modification. I guess it bears spike arms embedded acorns. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. They're not spike marks anymore. Everybody juices off. If they miss, yeah. Really yeah. 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 Yeah.
So no no advan uh, reason for change. No advantage gain is gained if a player's caddy, his or her caddy merely touches the surface of the putting green the line where the ball will be played. Over time, the prohibition on touching the line of putt has become subject to many exceptions. Current rule 16-1A lists seven different situations in which a player is allowed to touch the line of putt. The current prohibition is difficult to administer and penalties are not often applied. And those penalties that that are applied may be perceived as serving little or no purpose, such as when a caddy, caddy accidentally touches the line of putt with the flag stick. I mean, so, so let's look at the first one. No advantage is gained if a player or his or her caddy merely touches the surface of the putting green on the line where the ball will be played. If that's, that's true, why is the current prohibition in effect? But because you are allowed to fix all of those damage issues on your line of play no, on the my green. My point is, is I, if that's a reason for change, I, it can't be a reason for change so unless there's wrong. You, you got to change the other one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So so would this would this mean that if if I've got a twenty foot putt and I go up five feet in front of the hole, I can draw my club on my line? Is that what this yes. is? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that little spike mark. You can, you can walk all the way to the hole. So aim point, but pick up that's, 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 that's a point. That's a question, but you know, I but believe then, I believe that's going to be permitted. But then you've got, you know, hopefully we'll get to it. But then you got forty seconds to hit your shot, so maybe in forty seconds. And that, that's, that's why they said the pace of play issues right. are. They hope that the pace of play rules are going to, you know, impact. You know the other side of it by delaying it by fixing all that stuff in your line. All that stuff's gonna get fixed. Yeah. Well. Another guy's reading his book. Oh, you know, right. you know, hopefully everybody's kind of doing their maintenance. Yep. Right. You know, everybody's you know, doing your aim point and doing a lot of that stuff. Well, now that aim point doesn't become much of an issue with hard one. Two years. It is the first note that there is no penalty. The proposed new rules extend this option to strokes play from on the green as well. Mm -hmm. You want to leave the flag stick in the hole, perhaps to save time, and because you think it will help you, there will be no penalty for your ball field. If the ball is not holed, you will play so you get a as you get the flag. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what they said. Yeah, or it could be a deflector. Yeah, it could, it could, it could be good, it could be bad. Read the rationale. The USGA.org. One time I wanted to have a 50 or 60 foot plot that I'm probably not going to make that could hit the flag and stop it. Read, read you know, the rationale. So there would no longer be a penalty for uh, if a ball played from the putting green hits an unintended flag stick in the hole. Players would not be required to putt with the unintended flag stick. Sorry, would not be required to putt with the unattended flag stick in the hole. Rather, they would continue to have the choice to remove the flag stick before playing or to have it attempted. Mm -hmm. um, so, re so reasons for change. Allowing a player to putt with the flag stick in the hole without fear of penalty should generally help speed up play. They said uh, that there was a study done and it, it uh, helped uh, a limit or I guess decrease seven minutes on, on an average round if you were to leave the flag in. Wow. Which I mean, it's maybe you know that's that's probably assuming every hole they they leave the flag in. So say I mean you take half of it, that's still three and a half minutes, which is substantial. Um, so when the players do not have caddies, the current rule can result in considerable delay. A balance is expected that there should be no advantage in being able to putt with the unintended flag stick in the hole. In some cases, the ball may strike the flag stick and bounce out of the hole, and it might otherwise have been hold. And in other cases, the ball may hit the flags that can finish in the hole, and it might otherwise have missed. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's a great change. It, it gives a player the option mm -hmm. to choose what they want, and mm -hmm. it would it, it will definitely help speed up play. Yeah. They also get you hit. Yep, they, yeah, because you leave that flag in while you're putting, and the group behind you is over the hill. Right? And then use that flag stick as an indicator that people have cleared the ground. Yeah. yeah. It, but, it, it also allows the players behind you to shoot the distance instead of waiting for you to clear the green, too, which sure. could also help. But I think, I think safety is more important. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. right. Should eliminate nip outs. 
I'll tell you what I think the speed of the greens have caused a lot of slow flight. Well, you get greens going at 11 or 12, true, and people start knocking them by. Yep. And when if everybody misses a putt, does that make a two footer? It's another business. It's 18 months. Mm -hmm. It's a big thing. Water hazard will now be known as penalty areas. Water hazard is a Uh, did you notice that she measured uh, completely different than the other people have? Yep. She didn't go to the line. the club. She used the club. Mm -hmm. No, she used, she she used the mark She used yeah. the mark She used the She used 240. No, the uh, other people used the uh, butt of the uh, grip she, down to a mark. Oh, yeah, I think. Yeah, well, her 40 that would be a matter. Was down at the end of the shaft. But yeah, she I, think, I mean, she, I guess it would just depend on, you know, where you measure from. I mean, I would say, you know, you're right. It would, it would make a lot of sense to measure from the, from the butt of the end down, but you, know, you could also measure from, from the heel of the, of the shaft. To, to a point that's 40 inches. Too. And they did say heavily wooded areas, so all of our friendly red can now be marked as a penalty area. She said. Yeah, sure. So a penalty area would include both. both. All areas currently defined in the rules as a water hazard or ladder water, water hazard. And uh, underlined, any Change other areas three. the committee chooses to define as penalty areas with recommended guidelines to be provided in the handbook, which is their new word for the a decisions book. The penalty areas may therefore include areas such as deserts, jungles, lava rock fields, etc. The term hazard would no longer be used in the rules. So I think, I mean, I guess we'll, I guess we'll just skip through the reading, but it has been recognized that requiring areas to contain water seems to be a somewhat arbitrary reason for permitting such relief options. For reasons such as safety in case of play, Many committees have sought to expand the use of ladder water hazards by marking areas that do not contain water and by marking water hazards as red, where that is not specifically contemplated by the rules. The broader use of penalty areas would allow committees to respond to the wide range of settings in which golf is played by giving relief from areas that present similar obstacles to existing water hazards, such as difficulties with finding and playing a ball and similar practical needs about pace of play. So, I mean, Craig, Craig, you were saying that, I mean, this, this, this will definitely have a major impact on how, you know, we, we mark golf courses because a lot of the courses that we go to are gonna have our friendly red painted, which um, you know, is, is something to, to think about. I mean, most courses will say, it, it helps case of play, um, and maybe with these new simplified rules, maybe that's going to be right because maybe now more players will play by the rules instead of before. If it was marked red or not, the player just went and drops it there. Um, you know, they're not going back here or something like that. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how you know, how that works. But I I would say that we'll see a lot more friendly red, whether we use it in our tournaments or not, is a different story. Uh, yeah, I mean. Based on what tournament it is, we may use it or not use it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you say use tournament red, I well, mean, you say, not, you have to actually you have, have to paint it red. Right? You don't have to say a course out there like Fields, though, paints a lot of friendly reds out there. Yeah. We as a committee may not choose to accept all their yeah. markets. Mm -hmm. Right. And make it lost ball. Yeah. Yeah, once again, though, piece of play. Keep on. If I was a player, I'd be totally confused on these changes, uh, calling about a provisional ball. You hit it in the garbage, 
and it's not marked with red all the way down. It's jungle or lava rock. Yeah, you see, the red lines that you see in your water. Well, yeah, that was that was going to be my question on provisional balls on provisional balls on hazards, you know, in a penalty area as opposed to water hazards. Keep on, keep on, keep on. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. The proposed new rules introduce the term penalty area, which includes areas previously known as water hazards. If you find your ball in a penalty area and want to play from there, the same rules will apply as for playing a ball from the fairway to the rough. So, before making a stroke, you will be allowed to remove the loose impediments. Ground or any water is Ground your club, yeah. Ground your club with your ball. What did she move? I didn't say. Bunker is different, right? Than a family Read the story. Okay, so under new rule 17, there would no longer be any special restrictions when a ball is in a penalty area. The expanded designation for area that includes what are now called water hazards. Um, reasons for change. A strict prohibition on touching or moving loose impediments or touching the ground in the water hazard has never been practical. And so a series of exceptions had to be recognized in rule 13-4, uh, rule 12-1, and various decisions. This has created confusion and complications in applying the rules, such as needing to decide when a player was or was not testing, what constitutes touching as a result of or to prevent falling, and similar questions about applying the many exceptions. The current pro pro prohibitions have led to penalties that some view as overly harsh, such, such as where the breach was so inconsequential that the player could not have gained any advantage where even a careful player could not have avoided the penalty, and in a televised competition where the breach could not be detected by the player or others on the course and was discovered only through later video review. Treating a penalty area under the same as a general area for these purposes would simplify the rules, reduce confusion, and eliminate unnecessary penalties. Removing these restrictions is consistent with the purpose of the penalty area, which is not necessarily to require the player to face a more difficult challenge in playing the ball, but to address the practical need to give the player appropriate relief options because it would often be difficult or impossible to play a ball from the penalty area, such as when the ball is underwater. So this is just the beginning of the so, so this does not include bunkers. I mean, you'll get there. This penalty area is like being in the fairway. But they're not going to do yeah, all, everything. Fire. They're not going to make these penalty areas the same as general area for everything, are they? Mm -hmm. Keep on reading. Such as there's no <laughs> GUR. There's no GUR. There's no relief from any of the movable <laughs> obstruction. No. Uh, no. Exactly. Lynn, are you you can't be telling me that there's not going to be relief from an immovable obstruction. No, I, I didn't say that. It's it's not, okay. but, but you will find that I believe there are areas. <laughs> but I haven't I haven't gotten all the way through it either. I, I stopped reading it about that <laughs> when my daughter was there. I was in the hospital with my daughter because when she was All right, so any penalty area, water hazard, can be marked as red, which means that the lateral relief will be available to you. you see, she's got her hand on both ends of the num of numbers on her. She got her head right. right up there, actually. She used more fingers. Yeah, she's got it right where the hospital is. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 
So under the new rules, water hazards would be superseded by the expanded concept of penalty areas. And new rule 17 will provide the same basic options for relief that exists under the current rules. For reasons such as safety and pace of play, many committees have sought to expand the use of lateral water hazards by marking areas that do not contain water, but marking water hazards is red where that is not specifically contemplated by the rules. Two types of penalty areas would be known by the color of their marking. Red penalty areas today called lateral water hazards, and yellow penalty areas today called water hazards. And committees would be given the discretion to mark all penalty areas as red so that lateral relief would always be allowed. The term hazard would no longer be used in the rules. So giving committees the discretion to mark all penalty areas as red would, would make it simpler for players to learn the relief options as the distinction between yellow and red water hazards is not always well understood. It would further help pace of play. Individual committees would remain free to choose what to mark as a penalty area. And so, for example, could decide only to mark traditional water hazards and when to mark a penalty area as yellow, such as to preserve the challenge of playing a particular role. Does last act, because you, you know, it would allow a player that goes over a water hazard and bounces back in, clicking that side of the water. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think in those situations, I mean, it, it'll be it'll be on the committee to, to say. I mean, I would guess that the USGA will will be the lead in this, and what, what, you know, come come wherever the the open is in, in nineteen. I mean, hopefully it's not a course that has a lot of yellow. They'll they'll be setting setting you know the tone for everyone, whether it's all red there or it's going to be yellow and red. I mean, I think if just, just my personal opinion. If, if it, if the yellow is by the green, then yes, I think that that's important. But if it's, if it's in a landing zone or off the, off the tee shot, or it's, uh, you know, right, right in front of the tee shot, that, I mean, what's the difference between red and yellow? I mean, no player is hitting a 270 yard drive, spinning it back into water, and doesn't take advantage of it. But you know, if you think about 16 at Oakland Hills, you know, mm -hmm. get from across into that right hand side. And you hit in there, if you hit a wedge in there, you hit and you spin it off. Is that a part three? No, 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 no. That's part four. If you hit no, it in no, no, no. oh, no. down into the water. That's not a good example because. Right, that's lateral there. Yeah. Then a number. you're driving. That's, there. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. 16 in Oakland Hills is not a good example because the only time it's yellow by the green is when it's a professional tournament. Otherwise, it's red. Oh, that's what they're talking about. Okay, so so then you can drop right there if you mm -hmm. That's what they're talking about is the option of deciding that based on the tournament. So the it eliminates a lot of the risk. Yeah. Changes uh, the better example would be number six yeah, well, on the no green, on the north where there's a pond in front of the green. Sure. I know so that. You still that. <laughs> You've been there. You've still got a couple more elimination and a half since I'd released. It's just, mm, that's really, it's making the game easier. 16, yeah. All right, so this one, uh, they're going to eliminate the option side relief from red penalty areas. Uh, the proposed rule, you no longer have the option of taking relief on the opposite side of the point where your ball last crossed the edge of the penalty area. Okay. Now, this is a uh, this means that when a ball is in a red penalty area, the player would have three options for relief, all for a one-stroke penalty, rather than four options as today. But a committee could still adopt a local rule allowing opposite side of relief on these on those holes where it believes the other relief options are not viable. So you could still put it in there. The committee would. Could. So opposite side of relief is a complicated option that many players are not familiar with, and that is seldom used. The primary purpose behind this relief was to give an extra relief option for the unusual cases where neither, neither back on a, a line relief nor lateral relief on the side where the ball entered the water hazard seemed viable and only, the player's only realistic option is to take a penalty under stroke and distance. In practice, opposite side relief is often taken when a player actually has adequate relief under one or both of the relief options and thus serves only to give an unnecessary extra option that at times can seem too advantageous. This change would uh, also help avoid any concern that with the expanded use of red penalty areas, a player might be able to use the opposite, marks, the opposite side option 
can drop on the green side of the penalty area, thereby avoiding the challenge of having to play over the penalty. <clears throat> Makes sense to me. Yeah. I've never seen one. I didn't like it. We used it a few times. I just still didn't like it. You use it, you're ready. Why not have it there? I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Because it just creates more confusion. It should be old. Most people don't know. 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 Under the proposed new rules, there will no longer be a penalty for removing loose impediments if your ball is in a bunker. However, some of the current restrictions will continue to exist. For example, or in front of your ball when making a practice or when making your backswing. To learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, please visit usga.org slash rules. So under new new rules, the player would be allowed to touch or move loose impediments in a bunker and, and would generally be allowed to touch the sand with a hand or a club, but limited but a limited prohibition can um, continue so that the player must not deliberately touch the sand in a bunker with a hand, club, rake, or other object object to test the condition of the sand to learn information for the stroke or touch the sand in a bunker with a club in making a practice swing and grinding the club right in front of or behind the ball or in making the back swing for a stroke. Uh, reasons for change. The challenge of placing or sorry a plane from a bunker is the need to play out of the sand not to play with leaves, stones, or other loose impediments left in place in the bunker. The current approach has created confusion by stating a total prohibition on touching the sand with a hand or club and then recognizing many exceptions. The revised rule would simplify this by prohibiting only those acts where there is a purpose for doing so under the rules. Deliberately testing the condition of the sand with a hand or club will continue to be prohibited because part of the player's challenge is to assess and predict how the sand may affect the stroke. And also because it would be time consuming and inappropriate for players to dig into the sand with a hand or club for that purpose before every shot. Touching the sand with the, with the club right in front or right behind the ball or in the backswing for the stroke will continue to prohibit it. will continue to be prohibited to make sure the player does, not, does nothing to reduce the challenge of playing from the sand. These pro prohibitions are already well known and followed by almost all players. Touching the sand with the club and take, taking a practice swing continue to be prohibited both for the pace of play and to avoid having large amounts of sand deposited outside bunkers, especially greenside bunkers as a result of repeated practice swings. So I'm taking your club back to make your swing. If you touch the sand on the way back, you're fine. Still a penalty. No, still no you're penalty. still going to penalty. That's still a penalty. penalty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. 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 You your club as no I mean under this. No, no. it's still so a you, penalty. A, you can ground your club if you're just like standing. Specifically, you know, the you use back stroke. Yeah, yeah, contact. Yeah. Exactly. Or, you know, or if... Uh, Helping yourself in and out of the bunkers. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Dropping your club. All right. Well, this one's interesting. <laughs> The extra option is to have one penalty of two strokes. You can push back on a line outside of your This player is demonstrating the procedure. She first imagines a straight line running from the hole through where her unplayable ball is and extending behind the bunker. She then is allowed to drop within 20 inches on either side of that line, as far back behind the bunker as she wants to go. But remember, this is under penalty of two strokes. Hmm. 
To learn more about the proposed changes to the Commission Read Map, please visit usga.org slash rules. We'll never play on a blunder again. Yep, no, probably won't. Yeah, 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 two strokes. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. If you can't get out, you're probably just going to hit it back in on that. Surely <laughs> 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 just all the way. Are yeah. yeah. they proposing to put a, a limit on the number of strokes? Yeah. 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 So if you don't hold out, just give me a, two, give me a, two, give me a five. <laughs> That's also in this. Mm -hmm. So the player would have the act, uh, an extra option allowing the leap outside the bunker using the back out line to see here, but for a total two pound stroke. So a reason for change. It is not uncommon for a player to need to take uh, unplayable ball, unplayable ball relief in a bunker, such as when the ball is very close to the bunker wall of wood. Playing from bunker can be very difficult for some players, especially when a bunker has steep walls. This can present particular problems in stroke play because the player must finish out the hole in and so cannot simply pick up and move on to the next hole after multiple tries to play uh, from the bunker. <laughs> Giving those players an option for a leap outside the bunker would allow them to keep playing rather than be disqualified. This extra option would result in total two penalty strokes to make sure that the penalty is consistent with a significant amount of relief being allowed, and the option does not become commonly used by players who are able who are able to play from the bunker. <laughs> So when they when they introduced us, they were at at St Andrews and in, in um, Hell Bunker, mm -hmm. and the um, RA chief of staff or whatever his name was, you know, he he basically said, if you're up against us, it, it may be beneficial to just go back because you know, you're gonna you're gonna take one to maybe to maybe hit it up against a bank, and then you don't, you don't know what's going on. So you might. Right. Right. So, yeah, of course, yeah, you hit the bank, hit your body, and then go. You got to figure out how to position yeah, yourself. Yeah. You got to take it off your head. Yeah. And play it up there. You got to be a physicist. <laughs> All right. If you do this kind of way to penalize, you're taking advantage of your body. Are we going to? Let's see. No, oh, you're not going to get there. No. Oh, let's see. So let's do let's do these four because we're good ones. That's a good one. Which one? This new one here with the caddy. Oh, so yeah. With the ladies. Yeah. 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 I don't even see that. Yeah. Hmm. Here it is. Instead of the the mm. To learn more about the you know <laughs> And so this, as Tom was saying, uh, is uh, going to be an issue with the with the LPGA. One of the mm -hmm. players, Brittany Winscombe, has already come out against it. And I'm sure there'll be many more to follow. She was, um, she was adamant. Yeah. Energy. But mm -hmm. the reason or the rationale, well, I guess maybe they have it in there. But so I guess it's weird before we comment on that. The current prohibition would be extended so that once the player begins taking a stance for the stroke and until the stroke is made, the player's caddy must not deliberately stand on or close to an extension of, a, of the line of play behind the ball. There would be no penalty if the cat, caddy accidentally stands on or close to an extension of the line of play. <laughs> Rather than rather than in trying to help uh, in lining up. So reasons for the change. Although a player may get advice from a caddy on the shot to be played, the line of play in similar matters, the ability to line up one's feet and body accurately is, to a target line is a fundamental skill of the game for which the player alone should be responsible. Allowing a caddy to stand behind a player taking a stance so as to direct the player how to line up undermines the player's need to use his or her own alignment skills and judgment. We believe that an appropriate line is drawn between allowing advice from a caddy and prohibiting the caddy from being involved in directing the player in the act of taking a stance to play the ball. So I think it's interesting. I think this one will also be talked about, but um, you know, again, um, it kind of goes back to that. Lining, lining up or aligning your, yourself is, is a skill, and the USGA really does not want to take any skill out of the game. They want the, the most skilled players to be rewarded. And as someone that has 
lined up players and gotten lined up myself, it does it does help. And it's it's something that if you don't practice it um, and you just rely on someone to do it, it makes a big difference because it, and that was everywhere, right? Not just on the green, it was everywhere. It would everywhere. be able to stand in line of memory. Mm -hmm. So, so that we, we'll have some uh, some very angry dads at, at well, I guess not dads, but uh, well, maybe dads at, at the women's am or something like that. Yeah. That we have to watch out for um, in 2019. Next year, two years from next year. If your caddy has marked and lifted your ball, it can be replaced by you or your caddy. To learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, please visit usgn.org. See that uh, so the player's caddy will be allowed to mark and lift the ball in the putting green any time the player is allowed to do so without needing authorization. The caddy would continue to be allowed to replace the player's ball only if the caddy was the one who had lifted or removed the ball. So there's no compelling reason to prohibit a caddy from performing these purely mechanical acts <coughs> when the player's ball is on the putting green. In many places, it is common practice for caddies to mark with playing and place the player's ball when it first comes to rest in the putting green without authorization from the player. So I would guess outside the United States, even though this is not permitted under the current rules. Giving the caddy the authority is consistent with the limited role of the caddy. So in essence, or in, in some places where you have the caddies up ahead too, it should help speed up play as well. All right. It is important that you are aware of how your pace of play impacts others. The proposed new rules will encourage prompt pace of play by all players by recommending that. You play promptly throughout the round, such as by preparing in advance for each stroke and moving at a good pace between strokes and between holes. And that you make a stroke in no more than 40 seconds. The proposed new rules will also expressly allow for you to agree to play out of turn in a safe and responsible way, to save time or for convenience. Excuse me, I can move. The often refer to as the ready goal. That was the other picture. She must have got a She got relief. 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 So, uh, players should recognize that their pace of play affects others and they should play promptly throughout the round, uh, such as by preparing in advance for each stroke and moving promptly between strokes and, and going to the next key. A player should make a stroke in no more than 40 seconds, and, you, and usually in less time, after the player is able to play without interference or distraction. Committees should, adrop, should adopt a pace of play policy, which is different than now, which says they, they may adopt. So basically, they're asking us to adopt the pace of play policy, which we have. Um, in addition, new rule 6.4 would ex expressly allow playing on a turn in match play by agreement, and for stroke play, uh, would affirmatively allow and encourage players to play on a turn in a safe and responsible way to save time, um, or for the convenience, also known as ready ball. So. Um, and, and, and this kind of gets to the question that we had last week uh, that, we were, that we were asking uh, whether a player can agree to play out a turn in match play. And I actually asked Mark Wilson, he said that that decision 10-1C3 that we talked about basically covers it and that the player would be allowed to um, say, okay, it's, yeah, go ahead. And, but then they do waive the right to, to recall. To recall. Mm -hmm. And he said he thinks it covers it, which, after seeing this, I think it definitely covers that because this is the way of the movie. Is that a one-time only thing, though, in match play? 
the, the agreement to yeah I mean, I mean now yeah now now it would be you know if it's if it's in the way they're just, they're just playing but this new rule but this new rule would be any kind which but that no for would be open up a lot of ones but it? then but then you know the, yeah. but I think in the, in this new rule the player doesn't lose doesn't lose the right to recall the shot. So if I if I'm if I'm walking up and, and I'm five yards five yards closer to the hole than you are and I go up and hit really quick, uh -huh. I mean that's that you, know, you can still recall my shot, but it but if, if I well, not it, exactly but I lose the right. Right. But if you say, hey Kyle, why don't you go ahead and play first and I say, okay, that's fine, then I hit it. So you have to agree each time. Right. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll you sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The way you're reading that though. Well, you can't agree to waive a rule. No, no you, you might be able to agree on every shot, you know. But you can't do it prospectively. You can't no, you say, can't I'll, do I'll it let you hit. Round, say we're going to do it the whole right. round. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. You can do it on a shot, shot basis. Right. 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 And we kind of encourage that now in our tournaments, not in match play, but in the stroke play. Sure. Right. And I, I, I think that right was, you know, that was another thing. So last week, the, the um, RNA announced that they're going to be promoting ready golf at the 2000s of the of British Amateur, yeah. which I thought was kind of odd because I thought that most people just did promote ready golf. But you know, <laughs> at, after yeah. seeing this, it's now, okay, this is, you know, this, this is basically they're, they're putting this in, into effect before 2019. Mm -hmm. And it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But I mean, I, I think it's... Uh, well, there's no time to plan on a short stroke Right. No. But I'm not sure. Was that the game that they played for match play? Yes. In the British Amateur? So I don't know. That's what the rules are. I think it might be stroke. I think it is. It's stroke. 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 It's but, but, but basically, I mean, I thought that was just something that all committees did. But I mean, this this is kind of taking a step far is that they're basically recommending it, um, and it's uh, I mean, it's it's very interesting. We, we, I mean, we, we don't want to talk about pace play. We were right watch these videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you want to talk about pace play after this, uh, a, a lot of good things happen for pace play. So did the reasons for a change uh, by giving players affirmative guidance, support, and encouragement on prompt play. These proposed rule changes would help. In settling, setting expectations for both beginners and experienced players on what types of behavior are considered prompt play, including the maximum amount of time they should normally take to make a stroke, and so encouraging players better. to play faster by confirming that it is proper to play out of turn and stroke play when it is safe and responsible to do so. That is to play ready golf. The forcing place play will continue to be primarily up to no. each committee as there are limits to what the rules themselves can do to insist that players play promptly. These changes would enable committees to point to specific expectations set by the rules when using their authority to enforce prompt play and encourage every committee to adopt a pace of play policy so that all players on the course, whatever the type of level of play, would know what is expected of them. There are a number of other proposed new rules that will also encourage prompt pace of play, including the simplified dropping rules, allowing more areas to be marked as penalty areas, the expanded use of red penalty areas, and allowing players to pop the flex with them all. So here's this graphic. Uh, and then we'll get to one more, which that is that max score that's talked about on the bottom. <laughs> Mercy rule. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, in real amateur tournaments, that's the proposed new rules they put a new stroke play form okay. called maximum yeah. score. Under this alternative play, the maximum number of strokes will be set to cap a player's score. <laughs> yes. Examples of maximums are net double bogey, <laughs> two times par, net or bogey. a fixed number. Well, if you record your six, score under eight, USJ, they, you've strokes. got a certain handicap. They won't let you take another score. Right. Right. So you've got to drop a fixed number. You've got to look at the maximum score what? for that moment. When yes. you go recording your score on the USJ for your handicap, they won't allow you to take more than a certain number. Oh, well, I'd say hold on a stroke. Yeah, but that might be going away. Yeah, that's too. 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 Yeah, that's too
Supposedly. Yeah. This is only the beginning, oh, folks. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> Long journey, short first steps. So I suggest you do one more elimination of requirement to announce players intent to lift the ball. Okay. Also, there's one in here that says that you can't take a ball out of play just because it's out of shape. Right. Yeah. They let you take a ball out the on a cart pad or feel. in casual water, oh, Jeannie, that's but what not if it's out of shape. You just I mean, put it over the cart path, and then you can change it. Yeah. I'm also saying here the rest of the day and going through all the people want to do it for later today. So, yeah. uh, but uh, I mean, I think going back to this one, I, I think this is, I, I, I think Jim mentioned it. I mean, this, you know, the USGA is not going to use this in any of their tournaments. Which? So, you know, we're probably uh, max that score rule. Oh, max. And, you know, we probably won't use it at, at any of our major tournaments, but maybe for a junior stroke play tournament where we, we want to, to encourage people to come out and play. If they make 10, not have an option for them to be dis disqualified. A couple of years ago, we had that happen where we had a player shoot like 160 or something like that. I wasn't there, but I mean, it was I mean, basically we, we had to put in a, uh, a rule for the second day that allowed that, uh, you know, for if, if they got the 10, picked up. But basically, and I, I think this is going to be good for possibly some net tournaments and, and uh, some other non local club yeah, events. Definitely. Local big club. Local club events that we're trying to encourage participation. Yep. That he was well, in a competitive yeah, tournament and never, and never and only played in four rounds of his life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. His parents yeah. interviewed him in the game. Yeah. 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 I reached my max, I'm done, I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. And okay, so I guess we'll just, we'll just read the reasons really quick here. So the, the need to hold out in every bowling stroke play can have at least two downsides. One, it often leads to a slow pace of play. And two, it may discourage golfers from the field. They no longer have a realistic chance to complete, to compete or to make a good score uh, for the round once they get a very high score on one or two holes. Maximum score would be an alternative form of play that addresses both concerns by allowing a player to pick up when he or she scores at or above the maximum and by capping the player's score for any hole at the maximum. Maximum score form of play would be unlikely would be unlikely to be used for a league play, but it may be useful for in other uh, contexts, such as for play for beginners or golfers who are less skilled or experienced, and more generally for club level day-to-day -day play when place of play is a particular concern. So, and basically this kind of just takes the, the, a, a good part of Stableford and applies it to stroke play. Yeah. Um, Please don't do it in the net tournaments, Craig. Because <laughs> last year, the net am, the guy was coming down 18 with the tournament one, mm. and he had a 13. And if he had capped it, he would have won. Oh, <laughs> even, even capped it at 10? You betcha. Wow. Yep. That would be disastrous for that tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Not last year, it was two years ago. The last year I was involved, it was at Eagle Eye. He just had a disaster. Uh -huh. yeah. First of all, we're supposed to get on the green. I know. You let you get on the green, but it's still not a picnic. Oh, let me this one. It was awful. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Alright, so a player will be allowed to mark and lift the ball if they seat under the rule without needing first to announce this intention to another person or to give that person a chance to observe the process. But the player would still get a once-over penalty if he or she marked and lifted the ball without good reason to do so under that rule. 
The rule, uh, reasons for the change. The rules generally rely on the integrity of the player. In other release situations, including when a ball may be lifted and played from a different place, players are allowed to proceed under the rules without being required to involve another person in any part of the process. Eliminating the announcement requirements for these three situations is simplify the rules, bring consistency to the approach of trusting the player, and eliminate an unnecessary procedural penalty for simply not harming an appropriate person. This change should also speed up play because the player will no longer need to take time to inform another player of the intent to lift and wait to see if that other player wants to come over to observe the lifting and replacement of the ball. <laughs> Arbitrary now. I can clean my nobody's looking, so I can clean my ball. <laughs> yeah, I, I play with, we have guys that, uh, well, that, uh, that just their way of playing. They're, they're, they go over and pick the ball up and oh, put yeah. it back down every shot. You know, just uh, <laughs> they identify the ball. And it's, it's just a, you know, and this is going to permit that uh, play to continue, but it yeah. is what it is. Yeah. But that's, you know. Yeah, this is this is the integrity of the game, and so you're going to have to. We are going to have to talk about that with several players because they they do it almost inevitably. Yeah. So, but that's why I suggested read that one. And, and I think yeah, mm -hmm. this this is one that mm -hmm. uh, John Cook discussion. also talked about on on, yes. on Golf Channel and how he was very much against this one because mm -hmm. um, in turn at golf he was saying because you know mm -hmm. as a, as a an opponent or a fellow competitor, he you know he would like to be given the option to, to watch this or to see it. I think you in in those tournaments, I think you must give them the option of you know, and just for protection of the field and you know that whole issue is that well, if you don't if you don't announce, the guy doesn't know that oh no, you're down looking at it. And you can pick it up and put it back down. That's the kind of that you know they have the caveat in there. Player would still get one stroke penalty if he. Or she marked and lifted the ball without a good reason. Now somebody's got to determine what did you do it for? Yeah. Well, I thought it was embedded, or you know, and, and you know, you go through that as long as he marks it, but you got to go through that follow up issue 95 or 99 points. I know, <laughs> yeah, 90, 95. 95. But I think this is where you want to see a little bit of yeah. PGA rules. Oh, yeah, you know, I would but, all all of, uh, but yeah. even for us, I mean, yeah, you know, but they've been explicit, and they were adamant today on several occasions where they said there will be no bifurcation. Mm -hmm. They even talked to Slugger, and, it's like, ah, and, no, the, and they said that the PGA tournament officials were told they couldn't count. Well, but they were able to talk to Slugger White for just a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, other than that, they said the officials couldn't even talk to him there in Mexico because he went out there and tried to talk to some of the guys about the changes. They said we've been instructed to keep our mouth shut. That, uh, <laughs> this is all. Yeah. Work in process. Will we go to uh, Brighton? Mark? Oh, yeah. That's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to be there. <laughs> she only comes with Mark's set. I'm retiring. Yes. Oh, no, you're, you're retiring after, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm retiring after that, but I don't have any responsibility for the rules anymore. Ta Kyle and the well, tournament Kyle, department. Kyle's got to teach it. Mark oh, can't make it. <laughs> if I told Mark, he better be well this year. Don't forget the rules are still the same for two more years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, I mean, I guess if people if people want to stay, uh, we can continue going through the. We've only got about seven or so left. Um, I mean, I don't, like I said, I, I don't mind saying it, but if you guys have to leave or want to leave, that's a good file. I got to go get my car. Um, this so. damage club yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those are those things to bring later. Two years. Oh, yeah, come on over here. I got a couple years. I just want to see the church tomorrow. Are we going to do match play next week? Yes, yes. Next week we'll do match play. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I gotta go get my car. Do a yeah, yeah. 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 because I have I want to watch them. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you want to you started it the same thing I did. 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 He's ready to go to work. Yeah, yeah we got to have somewhere to live beside you. It's a nice thing. All right, so this, this one damaged the club that damaged during the round. 
<laughs> so proposal rule, you will be allowed to keep using any damage club unit if you damage it in anger. Um, so a player would be allowed to keep using or and or repair any club damage during the round, no matter what the damage, and even if the player damaged it in anger. The reason for the change, the rule change would greatly simplify the complex rules on damage clubs, allowing a player to keep using or to repair any damage club regardless of the nature or cause of the damage would benefit players in several ways. It would help players avoid the disqualification penalties that can arise today when a player hits a club against something in anger and then continues to use the club not realizing that the shaft was slightly bent or some other damage had occurred. The player would be able to choose whether to continue using that club in its damaged state or to use another club. Whereas today, for example, a player who damages a putter in anger is not allowed to use it for the rest of the round, even if it is still in, in a usable form, and so ends up having to putt with a wedge or another club. This is like the Woody Austin. Mm -hmm. This could be Woody Austin. Yeah. <laughs> this is a wide open door though. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. It really is. We yeah. used to have a kid in, in high school competition. He had a bullseye putter and he would bend it a certain way on the putting green before the, our matches and he would play it that way and because it wasn't damaged it was how we started yeah, right. but you can actually uh, adjust your club and say that you were i mean what's the difference between bending the club and using it or breaking it in half um and using an 18 inch putter that's broken in half are you allowed to use it yeah yeah uh, yes. Under this, so, under this. Right here. so the, the this potential <laughs> downside from a player's perspective is outweighed by the ability to use or repair any damage club as well as by some simplification that results. I mean, I I agree. It's I mean, it's, it, it's going to be yeah. interesting. I don't like the and there's, and that and there's, back down. Yeah. Um, no, well, you still have there are some other things in here yet under sportsmanship. And right. In their book. Yeah. Yeah. But still, but it's saying it's there. okay here, but then under the code, then yeah, you know, that's where you start to get into some of the. Well, then it becomes a discretion thing with the committee and the mm -hmm. club and, and the individual yeah. official that was watching the act. I know I saw a kid snap snap a club right over his leg in the oh, yeah. state high school championships. Mm -hmm. Hit one in the trees, <laughs> snapped it right now. I knew a guy yeah, used to play with his two iron after nine holes a lot in yeah. junior college. Yeah. My coach was always wondering how I was playing until the 12th hole when he saw me with the two iron. So but he had a he had a boy two years ago at the high school championships. Remember that? Mm -hmm. He uh, he threw a club on one hole and it was Swiss. Mm -hmm. And he broke a club on the next hole when he's but he said he slammed it into the ground and the head just flew up, you know. It takes a lot of effort to break the head off a club, you can slam it into the yeah. ground. Oh yeah. And after the, the first time we called the coach over and talked to him, he went and said something to the kid. When he broke the club the second time, he took him off. Yeah. He did not finish the day. It was his number one player. Yeah. He didn't care. He took him off. Yeah. I said, it's, it's a sportsmanship issue. He doesn't belong out here. Right. That was, guy, he finished, but it was his last senior match, and he didn't put him in the second day. Mm -hmm. yeah. The coach did. You know. yeah. Well, yeah. that's right. the right thing to do. I mean, you, right, you have to do something. Equipment. So you will not be allowed to replace a damaged club during the round if you are responsible for the damage. You are? Uh, you will not be allowed. You're not, oh, okay. You're not allowed to. Anymore. It's the same. So a player would not be allowed to replace a damaged club except when someone other than the player or any, anyone acting for the player caused the damage. Uh, the rule, the, this rule change would greatly simplify the complex rules on damaged clubs. In particular, deciding when a club is unfit for play may require a technical judgment that few players have the depth of understanding to make. And even referees can find it challenging to make such judgment, judgments quickly and consistently on the course, allowing a player to keep Using or to repair any damaged club, regardless of the nature or cause of damage, would benefit players in several ways. Uh, it would help players avoid the disqualification penalties that can arise today when a player hits a club against something in anger and continues to use the club, not realizing the shaft was slightly bent or some other damage had occurred. 
Uh, the player will be able to choose whether to continue using that club in its damaged state or to use another club. Whereas today, for example, a player who damages a pirate anger is not allowed to use it for the rest of the run, even if it is still in usable form. And so it ends up having to putt with a wedge or another club. Although there would be times when a damaged club is unusable and cannot be readily repaired on the course, such as when a driver head comes off, the practical ability to get a replacement club is seldom present other than at some elite levels of golf. This potential downside from a player's perspective is outweighed by the ability to use or repair any damaged club, as well as by the significant simplification of results. This change would be consistent with the overall philosophy that a player normally should play the entire round with only the clubs that he started, he or she started with, or added during the round to get to the 14 club limit. So is this is this kind of is this over overstepping the club's damage in the normal state of play? Right. Yeah. And so well, if, what they do just if, can't I, replace a club. if yeah. I take a swing and my driver head goes flying off, I'm I'm screwed. Most people are screwed anyways, unless they have a readily accessible accessibility right. to another club. So, so you're at your own at your, at right. your own club, and right. everybody's got the same driver. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but you got to run it, run out to the car on the ninth hole, undo delay or whatever. Yeah, try right. to replace it. I mean, I do take two putters. Adjustable an adjustment sometimes comes loose. Sure. Yeah. So let me gives you the option to tighten it. Now during the round. That happens in the junior tournament. Ten and eight. Yeah. Allows yeah. 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 He lost the head. He did. He if it's broken, broken you, know, you can't replace it. That's it. I think so. It's out now. Yeah, but you can. But if, no, it's, that, if it's damaged, so if it came loose, yeah. you know, if a driver head came loose, can you, you can get your sense. wrench out and, and sure. tighten it? That's down. what I thought yes. it said. Yes. Without you changing, you're able to fix. Without changing without the without setting on the club, you can tighten the head. Right. right. We do that now. Yes. We do that now. Okay. That we do last year. Yeah, absolutely. We've had it happen in the AM that uh, yeah. we were at Belvedere. Uh -huh. that so it's been going on for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. We've allowed that as long as it didn't change the settings of the club. Right. Okay. Okay. Like the club is rattling, can I fix it? Yep. Yes, I think we gave him permission to do that. Actually, yeah. in that case, the guy didn't have the tool within his bag, and we had a tool brought out from the club. Somebody had one, yeah. Yep. The, 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 the one tournament I was at, he yep. came over and fixed the junior kids. He played three holes with, with he didn't know what the hell was going on. And, right. You know, it, was, it was great. Came over and, and he had the tool, so. But that's allowed now. But this says the player would be able to choose whether to continue using the club in its damaged state mm -hmm. right, or to use another club. Whereas today, using a damaged putter in anger is not allowed to use for the rest of the round. Damaged in anger. Yeah. Right, but if, you, if something happened that... You stepped on it, yeah. you know, stepped on your putter and snapped your putter. You Somebody know. drove over it. Yeah. Right. You can replace it. Interesting. I always yeah. take two putters with me to turn this. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I always have one on the car. Put one underneath the cart. No, no, just in my car. It's significant amount I keep it in my car. 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 Okay. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> <laughs> some of these are so 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 figure all the rest of the clubs I can maneuver so around. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to put without a putter. I just want to get this right. So if, if, if I'm swinging and my, my club head comes off and it's yeah. nothing that I did in anger or anything, I can't fix that club, right? That's what it is. I don't believe know. that's what it says. That's what it says. It's just new rule of saying, right? Yeah. Why? No. You can use the club in its damaged state. Which you couldn't do before. Which, but you can't right. do that if the club head comes off. Its damaged state is in two pieces, so the club's not usable. But it says you can repair it. It says you can repair it. This is allowing a player to keep using or to repair. To repair any damaged club. club, regardless of the nature or cause of the damage. Right. Right. But that would benefit the player in several ways. No, that okay. I'm sorry. That's a lead-in statement. Allowing the player to do that would benefit the player in several ways. It would help the player avoid disqualification penalties that can arise when the player hits the club against something in anger and then continues to use the club, not realizing the shaft is slightly bent or some other damage had occurred. So that's, that's permitted. You can continue to use it 
if it's damaged. Right? The player would be able to choose whether to continue <laughs> using the club in its damaged state or to use another club. So you can do that. Whereas today, for example, a player who damages a putter in anger is not allowed to use it the rest of the round. Even if it is still in a usable form, but this didn't this is talk about, about anger. You know, the loose head or to repair or fix. That's that was the question you asked. But right? this is really talking about in anger of, of right hurting of breaking a club or right. damaging. But in the normal use of play, a player would be allowed to keep using or repair any club damaged during the round. Right. So no matter head, what, so if the head came off, not in anger, Tommy, you could put the head back on if you had the components. Right. If you had the head and the you gotta have the head, and you gotta have the screw, and you gotta have the tool to attach your wrench. The screw, but the screw stays in there; it doesn't come but, out. But not only can you not replace it, you can't change it. Right. Yeah. Right. You can't change you it. You assemble it to the components to the settings that it had. Right. right. But you wouldn't be able to change it, so it was set for a draw, or it was set for a fade. Right. How would you know? Or it's at well, degrees. See, that I know my settings things. aren't. Yeah, you know, what were the settings? You, you didn't know what before. Before. Yeah, but nobody else is You know what you set your drive. I, I don't. Right. But then I know where it's. If you're in a fade all day and you're like, yeah, oh, I don't want to play this over. Well, no. It's like you're in the after 14. But even the not adjustable clubs. But I mean, if you take that. A wedge there, don't you know how to bend the thing the right way? If you're hooking the ball, they stay on the way, and you know how to bend the ball. This is yeah. bad. Well, that's what yeah. they're letting you do, yeah. yeah. really. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah me too. It's I, like I think it's the next thing. There's a lot of wide open things in this room. This is the next one, right? Did we do that one? We're just trying to make sure that it's qualified. How about that? When you don't know, I can see. I, I haven't read that one. Okay, so they say um, what this one is that you'll be permitted to use a distance, distance measuring device unless a local rule has been adopted. Basically, all it is is just fucking that. So now it's you're you're able to use that, or you're not able to use it unless unless there's a local rule. Now it's going to be it's, you're able to use it unless a local rule says no. Right. And so it's generally on only on the PGA tour right now, isn't it? Right. And right. they're asking why they can't this morning. The conversation was if you're gonna do it there, why don't you do it here? Yeah. For the PGA. And yeah. Right. yeah, and and they had the of the head of the PGA of America I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I mean Yeah, Pete Blue yeah. and, and uh, I mean, he was saying that, you know, maybe maybe that that they would allow caddies to use range fighters. Yeah. In, in, in the tournament. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's all about the slope. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so the scope of things, that there's a lot of them. That's one that should change right away. I mean, yeah. even the pros. I, yeah. I think it, you know, having to face it off and it takes more time. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 it does. It'll expedite that process yeah. they, a little bit. I think they won't be pacing off. They don't have to look at the yard as yeah. yeah. much. That would allow them to do that. But it's still, you can use anything to have slope. Right, I know. That's what I need. Oh, oh, I just got a, I got a new one. I got the one that vibrates when you get the stick. Mm -hmm. Man, is that nice? <laughs> you know, like the hands on stuff. That's great. Yeah, yeah, for for us, all this was is Mine does too. new good information that's going to generate a lot of discussion. Right. Yeah. But then this next year, we're going to use the old rules. Next. Continue yeah, to do that. Is yeah, sure in there. Next year. Year. Next year. I have a 20 inch thing out of my uh, Oh, yeah, he's still up here. He's the screen, you know. I think uh, some of them they could put in. Put in the principal for us. Yes. Yeah, I don't see one of them. They could have that many local rules. Well, yeah. On the years one, they say they're not going to be able to play sport. Yeah, each one, you know, the crop area or. Yeah, so there's all one here about reasonable judgment about it. Assuming well, the well, players the I saw a girl that was in the yeah, 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 it's all over the place. Yeah. 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 Of the proposed adjustments to rules of the players' conduct or protection. Uh -huh. Okay.
Um, the proposed new rules are now directly address the high standards of conduct expected from the players. The committee now has the authority to adopt its own code of conduct and to set penalties for breaches of that code. Um, so, you know, one example of that, uh, the AJGA usually has, has their, their own code of conduct policy and they, they actually put in their code of conduct policy that they're, that they're able to penalize players if they don't replace their divots. And this, you know, this would be something that can be extended that they've already done uh, because no one's probably said what right. you're doing is wrong or against the rules. But basically this is just saying that you know, we could do something along those lines. This is the committee responsibility. Yeah, issue. exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. And uh, let's see, other ones. You are now able to mark and lift the ball to identify it. Uh, check for damage or see if it's a bet without first announcing your attention to another player. Uh, so long as you do all that can be reasonably expected under the circumstances to make an accurate estimation uh, of or measurement, your reasonable judgment will be accepted even if later shown to be wrong by other means, such as video technology. So that one is, is pretty significant. Um, so you're not going to have people calling in rulings and have it be you know, an adverse effect on TV. Right, yeah, exactly. TV, yeah. I think that's the biggest farce, personally. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's one thing if it's, you know, yeah, if it's, you can't if tell it's, if it's able to be seen. Well, that was the, and the high definition. That was the problem that was created yeah. by the, by the attempt to make everything correct, like football, basketball, he's on the line, he's not on the line. Yeah you know, to re re utilize re technology to validate or to verify the rule based on, you know, that condition. Right. But, you know, you needed to stop play and do that, you know, and so that was the time consuming issue. But those sports have used that and golf tried to use the video replay to yeah. monitor golfers performance on a golf course and that, you know, the, the guy out on the sixth hole you know, if you had a camera there, it was wonderful. If you didn't, you know, he got the benefit of the doubt while the other guy had, you know, a whole series of cameras. That's the tiger issue, Frank. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody He's followed him. So that was, that was the problem that they created. So I think they backed away with this decision is that they're not going to be utilizing that technology as forcefully as they did for a while. That's or or. Yeah. Or maybe they're they're setting the stage potentially for down the road when they have the camera on every hole. Yeah, and, every place. And, yeah. And every you know that that, that, that argument can be made. That's certainly possible. Yeah. yeah. That will really speed up play. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, it would declare that players are expected to play in the spirit of the game by acting with integrity, showing consideration to others, and taking good care of the yeah. course. It would unequivocally state the committee's authority to disqualify a player for any serious misconduct that is contrary to the spirit of the game. In the place of the unclear concept of breach of etiquette, it would use the more direct and stronger phrases misconduct and serious misconduct. Uh, Rule 1.2b would also give the committee authority to adopt its own code of conduct and set penalties for its breach. So again, it's just more direct, I think, which is good. Personally. So, golf is sport which high standards of conduct are expected from the players, and the rule should declare this in a clear and direct way. Although the current rule book has a separate etiquette section that covers the most important aspects of the spirit of the game, priorities and emphasis of the section are unclear, as it also includes more general recommendations on a variety of topics, and the section does not have the force of rules or naturally from, uh, form part of the committee's powers. Using Rule 1.2a to explain playing the spirit of the game would help in giving more prominence to the expectation that all players will act with integrity, show consideration to others, and take good care of the course, and setting expectations so that players are on notice that serious misconduct and failing to meet those expectations will lead to disqualification. And so, I mean, I'm sorry, Kyle. Which one are you looking at here? Uh, code, of, code of player conduct. Ah, got it. Okay. And, and, and yeah. this, you know, this is another yeah. um, thing where one one example that I have a couple of years ago, we ran this tournament in, in Rochester, 
New York, and this kid pulled out a, an e-cigarette during the round and started smoking it, and we and we disqualified the player. And then we got to this whole argument about you know whether whether that was the right thing to do because well you know the mom was like well you know maybe maybe there was no nicotine in it or, or like maybe there's no tobacco, tobacco. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. And, and you know it's like all this stuff and it's just the more direct and, and, certain, and that, that you can be with players the less likelihood that there is of things like that happening where it's just i mean come on mom like understand like well, you know what do you should we can't have pe people smoking in our tournaments i mean i'm sorry like, but it, it's uh it's, a, it's an etiquette thing, but it's also a policy thing as well. But this this way you can be more direct instead of saying, you know, a tobacco product or something like that as an yeah. example. But they didn't have the e-cigarette. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Uh, I, I ran into that last yeah. year with the, uh, the net tournament. Uh, one of the competitors uh, had a heavy reeking smell of marijuana when I went over to help <laughs> yeah. find his ball. And hence I've seen him at three other net tournaments <laughs> and he's been known to be kind of glassy eyed every right. time and he mm -hmm. seems to be having a good time so I asked uh, Ron Gaines at this one I said uh, mm -hmm. he said well who was and I said well I really didn't see him smoking it so let's just leave it be so, right but but this is more you know, obviously directed at the committee responsibility right. and, and creating you know, some specific direction to the committees to give them the opportunity yeah. to performance create the yes. performance requirements for a local event. You know, that's what they're doing. So, so was the, junior the difference between the USGA and the PGA sure. tournaments and, you know, those on TV versus, you know, your club event out there, you can write your own code of conduct, right. which are acceptable and, right. you know, you, the committee has the responsibility to do that. If you can get more committee action, you know, the committee at a local club is going to have more responsibility to do. Yeah, because it's interesting because one of the tests on one of the quizzes that I've been right. taking, mm -hmm. it says you can't have a penalty, uh, you can't have a two-stroke penalty for cell phones. Mm -hmm. Right? It's specifically in there. Right. And I go to different invitations mm -hmm. and they've got, mm -hmm. do you use your cell phones for two-stroke penalties? Just and drive them so they, they right now they can't do that. Right. Yeah. But that, that's you know, right in a, in something in yeah. in difference to the rules of golf. The rules of golf said you can't do that. Right. Now they're giving the committee the ability right. to modify and make it either more flexible mm -hmm. or put, put some specific requirements on to right. you know those people that are playing in this event that we have the responsibility right. to administer. They can't, you don't say you can't yeah. do for a penalty. But yeah. you, you think in the next two years, uh, as this stuff is going on, you think it might be hold the, our local uh, a committee to incorporate a couple of these rules? Oh, I, I think that's going to be a given. That's, I think that's going to happen. You're going to see for slowly see see this they be work. adapted as local club events or right. local, you know, like if you're going to run a tournament, I mean, you know, here's, here's your guidelines for sure. the way to create some requirements for. I think the measurement device is a really good one. Yeah. I, I mean, that's. Yeah. Did they have anything in there about provisional balls on, on the pump penalty has or penalty? Well, that's the area. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah. That's and, a and big, can, big you, thing. can you create a local rule to do that? Because I, I know Western has not, continually talked about well, it. I mean, I know, I know now you can. Now you can. Yeah, you. You no, could no, do one. No, you, no, no, you can't. You cannot. Yeah, there's there's actually a decision in there. That, yes, that, is there? That talks about that you that. can't have a make a make a local rule. A local rule for oh no, no. provisions for a lateral water hazard. You can't do that. Right. Yeah. So they specifically, I think it's a big. I, as a rookie, I ran into it so many times with the juniors and the net players. It's, it's well, the reason I ask is I had a question. Our last hole. Yeah. Our last hole. As a river runs all the way down the right. left side, but there's great big trees. You don't know. If and you, you, the problem becomes, you don't know if it's in the hazard, inside the hazard line, in the river, or is it lost? Because there have been times where somebody says, "Well, I'll just, I'll just take my lateral hazard drop, and then, and then, you know, 50 yards up, the ball went and split out of the tree, and it's, you know, it's 80 yards up in front of where you drop." But if you announce on the team that you're hitting a provisional ball because you because the 
you for a ball that might be lost, lost outside the hazard. Right, but I, I, they're running I, into, I understand the kids that, are sitting there. I'm going to hit a provisional. It went in that stuff. For yeah. a ball that yeah. might be lost outside the hazard. Right. So, anyways. And we had that conversation mm -hmm. like two weeks ago. Yeah. Now, I, I think it's my, my personal opinion. I think it's a stupid rule and it's just, it's just, Penalize the players if they want to hit a provisional, hit a provisional. Right. And they get up there and it's water. Yeah, it's it water. Talks about and, speeding up play. Yeah, yeah that's a big speed up play yeah. for me. And then, you know, otherwise now you have to you have to go up, yeah. see if it, you know, see if the crowd. The other thing, you know, the yellow water hazard, you might you might hit it, yeah. and you're not sure if the ball clears, and you have to actually go up on the other side, look to see if it's there, and then it's not mm -hmm. come all the way back and then drop. Right. And just you know, be able to play another ball provisionally just in case yeah. it, it it's not crossed over. A couple of holes I was on, I after a while, because they were juniors, if I saw going the hazard over there and the kids all of a sudden I saw them up there on the tee, teeing up yeah. another ball, I'd get out in the yeah. middle of the fairway and go like this just because I didn't want them to be penalized. Right. Right. So but I don't know if I'm overstepping the bounds there. No, I, no, I, I think I, that that's that, yeah. for sure. Matt. I would say on 11, they should, they should get a penalty, but that's just Well, that's the big thing. There's, there's areas there that aren't red yeah. on the left side. Yeah. Supposed. Yeah, exactly. So, and, you know, I mean, you can't tell on the You can't tell on the right. If you've you never see. played on the right. You know, right. Even the left. Yeah. All right. Uh, a few more here. So, or sorry, was that standards of player conduct? Yeah. Which one was that? Oh. Most of them Yeah, that was this one. Same thing, maybe. Uh, no, this one's different. Okay, so basically the same thing, but this is. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. I think there's some of the reasons that they're yeah. so. Some, uh, some co committees have requested additional means under the rules to allow them to address player conduct that is contrary to expected standards that are central to the game, such as courtesy and sportsmanship. In many cases, disqualifying a player for inappropriate behavior would be overly harsh, leaving committees today with no way to penalize players for such behavior. This has been a particular concern for junior golf organizations whose mission often includes teaching young golfers how to act well on the course. The proposed rule change will give committees flexibility to set and enforce standards of conduct specific to their competitions and players should they choose to do so. I think it's a good thing. I think the cell phone thing is a is a, a one that, that's used a lot. You know, a lot of places say, oh, you can't use cell phones. But I, I always have a huge issue with that, but it's not in the rule book. Um, so, I mean, you, know, you can say it, but there's no, as as of right now, the way the rules are written, you cannot penalize someone for, for yeah. using the cell phone. Right. Now, if 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 they put it in there as a local rule, I mean that's something that they're doing on their own. And I mean, if you really want to, I think you can fight it because it's not in there. Um, you know, whether it's in their you know uh, conditions of competition or local rules, I guess is a different story. But you know, now at least with this, the GAM or the USGA or some organization can say we have the authority to do this and this and then you know they can tell a parent that these are the rules it's it's allowed in the rule book whereas before they had no way to say oh you you're right that's not allowed but we don't want cell phones out, out of the course and nowadays it's more the kids are more texting right and yeah. playing games sure nobody talks on the phone no except me <laughs> yeah, I think this is the last one. So the same thing. Um, reasonable judgment and estimating and measuring. So the, the picture is all the same, but yeah, that yeah. confused me. I kept going right, back yeah. and forth, and I thought I was I was trying to catch yeah. up with you, and yeah. I couldn't catch up because the picture was yeah. Okay. So under this new rule, whenever required to estimate or measure a spot, point, line, area, or distance, the player's reasonable judgment would be accepted if the player did all that. Could be reasonably expected under the circumstances to make a prompt and accurate estim estimization or measurement. This means that the player's reasonable judgment would be upheld even if later shown to be wrong by other information such as video technology. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
So the rules generally rely on the integrity of the player, and this is a natural and appropriate extension of this trust in the player. There are many times when the rules require a player to estimate or measure a spot, point, line, area, or distance, such as when the player uses the ball marker to mark a ball spot and then replace the ball, or needs to find a reference point or the reference line for taking relief, such as the nearest point of complete relief or the line from the hole to the spot of an unplayable ball. Uh, or to determine the extent of a relief area, such as measuring a fixed distance from the reference point or a reference line. Such judgments need to be made promptly, and players often cannot be precise in doing so. So long as a player did all that could be reasonably expected under the circumstances, a player gets no penalty for any small inaccuracies, irrespective of any damage gained, any advantage gained. Ex uh, accepting a player's reasonable judgment will limit second guessing that can arise from the use of enhanced technology such as video review and golf is televised. And I think this is so. Great. My point of entry in the, in the lateral hazard right. is yeah. X. And yeah. Unless, unless somebody really has a real issue with it. Your fellow competitors, or you, had, you use the judgment of you know, other Information witnesses that, earlier, yeah. that were out there watching them. Hey, I think it went in here. You got four of them that said, okay, you know, what's your consensus? It went in about here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then you yeah, move yeah. on. Yeah. And, 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 you know, but that was, you know, a couple of guys, you know, after they hit it across the corner and then it ended up in a hazard, they dropped way back here. And then, you know, the instant replay showed that they had missed it by 30 or 40 yards. Right? Yeah. You know, they did the best that they could and everybody agreed. Move on. Yeah. That makes sense. That, you know, and, that, so. and that kind of goes back to Jean's story with with a Dotty Pepper yeah. and, and the blimp. I mean, so she was right. at right. Uh, a women's open and Dotty hit this drive across the water and you know, Dotty was was adamant or at least wanted to go see if it crossed up on the other side of the water. Yes. And and Jean basically told her, No, no, it didn't. And then Dotty said, well, well, how do you know? And then Jean Pointed up to the, the yeah. sky yeah. because the blunt was there, and and they had the video to say that it never That's crossed. Oh my gosh. But you know, with this, I mean, I think I think uh, yeah. you, you should still be able to use the technology live time. But oh, yeah. I mean, if you if you have this this kind of rule where technology is automatically overridden by the players, which it sounds like maybe this may be the case, then could the players just always say, hey, you know, we're gonna we're going to stick out for each other, or we're going to yeah. join together and always say, oh, yeah, I think it was this, and it could be 10, 15 yards farther up. I don't know. The line of flight so, happens a lot that way. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. we had that one in Kentucky. We had four people lining up for this guy, you know, and play right. over in the middle of the crap. I mean, Each one of those guys was trying yeah. to Terry was on one was... end, I was on the other, and right. his caddy was down there, and I kept moving the caddy, right. trying to get the line through there. Yeah. And uh, it was great. Yeah, yeah. a lot of this happened. Yeah. In our terms, to a lot of the, the younger kids are trying to protect yeah. their friends and their buddies. So, oh, sure. Yeah. You know, sure. I remember calling a penalty on a guy that literally stepped on a branch, mm -hmm. kept it out of his, cleared his path, mm -hmm. and his fellow competitor said, he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, mm, yeah, yes, sorry, he did. Right. So I watched him. Yeah. yeah. I watch them go get another club and come back and step on it again and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> now it was my first tournament. Sure. And I didn't I didn't stop it. Sure. Fortunately, mm -hmm. it never affected anything. Yeah. He still finished second. <laughs> <laughs> he was leading the tournament. Hartman okay. comes out to me and goes, Oh yeah, first tournament you pick on the guy leading the tournament, huh? I go, Oh really? <laughs> so Kyle, did we do maximum or propose change maximum score? Form of stroke play, we did. Yeah, okay. yeah. all right. Yeah, that was the, the only other one yeah. that I saw on TV that wasn't in your video. I missed it was changing the um, disqualification penalty. Yeah, there was something I read, but that was way up there. It's two stroke penalties that are disqualification and something. <laughs> I gotta go. They had to have done sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Maybe, maybe it's not one, maybe they just talked about it, but I swear yeah. I saw that that yeah, other committee would be allowed to, to modify other 
a DQ down to a two-stroke penalty or something like that, which I mean I think is a good thing. I mean, if a player you know plays a wrong ball and then hits their tee shot in the next hole and they don't, you know, do they really need to be disqualified for that? I mean, just you just give them two strokes. And what's you know what's the difference? Um, Typically, when you get a two-stroke penalty, it, you're, you're not playing very yeah, well, exactly. and you're not going to make the cut in. Right, right, exactly. So, I, I mean, I think it, it it would be nice if they could get to only people only being DQ'd when they you know did something terribly wrong, or, 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 or it was a an etiquette thing, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, code of conduct thing. Now, right. where they they throw a club in, in the water and you know scream the f on the top of you. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just I feel like disqualification is is overly harsh, and they've already started to backtrack on it with the scoring thing by yeah. like changing. So I mean, you know what? What's to say playing from the wrong ball is? Then it, it just doesn't make any sense. To me. That's it. Yeah. Might be easier to pass the test now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time it won't be because you're because you're see, you'll still have the old stuff in your head, oh, yeah. and then and then eventually it, it, it'll it'll get out. But but, yeah. but there's still a lot of stuff like on all the quizzes and stuff that oh, are yeah. still relevant. Sure, you know exactly. And it doesn't hurt to have that knowledge, right? But um, I, I can just hear it now. The next two years, well. The new rules. Yeah, so, yeah. The new rules are in 2019. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of players that are going to hear about yeah. it or see it. They're, you know, they're going to do it. And be ang I'm anxious to see what happens tonight. Yeah, sure. You know, to see did anybody hear about it? What do you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think they've done an excellent job in doing you know the information as to the reasons that some of the rules are as they are. Right. You know, and do the you know why the why the rules are, you know, they don't really have that rationalization published. The, the, the decisions do that in many ways, but, you know, this is uh, what you saw here. A lot of that is, you know, the justification of the reasons why it was written. Right. And, you know, somehow they got to collect that. It, obviously, in this format, they've done it now, but, uh, you know, that's, that's going to come back to be used by a lot of people, I think. Right. You know, this is why... This is the intent, you know, and so you're going to, you know, and, and that's always the, uh, you know, the difficulty with writing the rules. I've got a buddy who's afraid of play. He's a pretty good player. Yeah. And he's just kind of to the point now where he thinks he could play. Concerned about making a mistake. He, he's yeah. totally yeah. freaked out over the rules. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know the rules. Mm -hmm. If you don't, your fellow competitors are going to, or there's always... A rover, somebody right. that can help. Right. But when you play, eight guys go out, and now we're going to play a match. Right. You create your own rules. You create your own, you know, instructions. You and you think everybody knows it, but you know, you got one you guy that's got the book, yeah. and the other guys are, you know, thinking they do it, and now right. you're going to get into an issue where rules. Yeah, so that's what the rules of golf are going to attempt to do, so that you can have something to fall back on. But clean them up, get yeah. rid of six hundred and seven hundred pages right. of decisions. And it's going to be interesting to see what they end up doing with the new. Well, hold it. Where did you? That's what I. That I saw it. I saw it on on golf like, where, where did you see the? the book and, yeah. Where Where did you? Where did you get that? It was on. It was on the golf show. So that was another link. It was no, no. It, it was another. It was a graphic that they showed up. It said, you know, they're they're, they're going to have the the official guide for the rules. They're going to have a player's guide for the rules. It's yeah, that you, you showed notes that. that she had. Too. You opened up the rules, you know, in a draft form. Yeah, that was on the website. Yeah. Where on the website? Uh, I looked and I couldn't find it, but I didn't look that hard. Well, the nice thing about all this is, you know, they're going to do it in two years. And so, and they're throwing all this stuff out. They want the feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not right. just saying, look at, here, here's the new rules next year. And we're going to try it. This, you know, there's kind of what they did with anchoring. To, they uh, did that with the anchoring thing. You right. know, they had, it's going to be two, two and a half years later. We want your feedback. Um, yeah. Unlike some of the other uh, 
NBA NCAA, or, or college football, they just they make they a rule it. change and, and then, then they and then you find out after you see it a couple of times. Right. You find right. out right. later on whether it's a rule or yeah. Yeah. Right. but you don't play for college football. Here's, right. You don't play college football. We play the game. We play the game. The rules page I go to resources. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, see again. So you go to the rules, the main rules home. I, I got, okay. I'm under, I'm I'm under rules. Okay. To, Here we go. We're on the same page. Resources. No. Resources. And then up top here, propose new rules. Propose new rules. And then here's this. Oh, there's the draft. So they're going to have, ah, yeah, this is the one. Yeah. Okay. And so, so, yeah, so this has everything. And I'm guessing that that you know, modification of, of the DQ penalty, because I mean, they, they, they did say uh, major proposed changes, and I didn't count how many went through that. And that's what I we went through. 30. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Are, are they going to 27 new, 27 rules? You said 24. 24. It is 24, 24 so they're yeah. eliminating on 10. The, right. 10 rules. On the draft, there's 24? There's 24 in there. It should be, yeah. This one they have on yeah. draft edition new rules 2019. You know, it'll be. I mean, this is this is obviously they spent us so much time oh. and, and effort in going through this. I think that's one thing that people wonder how long they've been actually happening. working it's on this. Five years, I heard either oh, I heard either four to six, and yeah, four down to mm -hmm. 20, yeah, 24. Yeah. That's a lot of. Yeah. Some time. And then you're going to eliminate basically all these decisions. Sucker's 515 pages. Is that what you're? I don't know. It's a good I document. Think, I think, I think yeah, the player's good. version that I opened up was like 112. This was 115. Yeah. Okay, there you go. But what's the difference between the. It's, well, so so that that's just the, the, the regular rule, book, which I don't have with me. Um, but that. So that that's the one that's going to be printed out like the small one is today. So the small decisions book. book is going to be what they call the handbook, and that's going to be obviously significantly less. And they have a, a fourth one, which will be the it's like the committee guidelines or something like that for the associations. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. And, and that will have your things like code of conduct, case of play, and things like that in there. I, I would assume, right. So this is 550 pages, right. 34 rules. Going to 24 rules, what's the number? So, so in, we don't we don't have the actual their equivalent of, of what's going to be in the decisions book, but but the actual rule book is 115 pages. Yeah, which, you, you took 10 off. And I don't think that 100 and um, or 20. I think it was like a couple hundred pages, maybe that little rule book. You know, yeah. without the. The, the small rule book, I don't sure. have it with me. I do. I, I get rid of 200 pages. Yeah. yeah. Just going on. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, through index, it's 231. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're cutting it in half, essentially. Yeah. Maybe that was the goal, was to cut it in half. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here on, you know. Sure. Status. And sure. Gambling. You know, sure. There's pager on gambling. And, right. Um, you know, and then you had the appendixes. Because you know, at one time when they had the uh, embedded ball, the, the embedded ball was only through closely mown areas. Right. Yep. Right. So and the appendix. Right. It is. Mm -hmm. But the appendix now that we use makes it.